Welcome to the Gen Z Childhood Trauma Iceberg, the complete saga. Over one entire year ago, today, I released part one of the series, and since then, it has been one wild ride. And I made this video here, a complete saga, to basically, you know, be a celebration of all the videos in the past. So this is every single Gen Z Childhood Trauma Iceberg video, all in one with a little bit of uh, some improvements and tweaking here and there. But by no means is this two videos one after another. No, no, no. I actually went through the effort to put each one to be segmented accurately to each other. So for example, when it's part one or the tip of the iceberg for the original Childhood Trauma Iceberg, it's the tip of the iceberg for the Community Iceberg right after. So it's essentially uh, all one big video that is flush with each other. I'm really excited to see what you guys think about this. As always, if you're on the younger side, I would suggest that you click off this video since we get into some pretty creepy and disturbing subject matter. So, join me in a deep dive into your childhood trauma. Here we go. Starting off at the tip of the iceberg, we've got William Afton's corpse. William Afton's corpse can be seen inside the Springtrap character in Five Nights at Freddy's 3. This is always a grisly sight since you could see his flesh and teeth through the robot. FNAF jump scares. This one is very self-explanatory. This is simply referring to the jump scares in the Five Nights at Freddy's games. Agamemnon counterpart. This video is a strange one to say the least. It starts off saying in the year 2571 a video cassette tape was found in a pile of rubble on a certain blue planet. What you're about to witness will not be the contents of the aforementioned cassette. This is an entirely different recording. It proceeds to show what looks like some sort of demonic kid show with intense screaming in the background. If you want to learn more, Scare Theater made a pretty good video about it. Giga Bowser. In Super Smash Bros. Melee, at the end of the adventure mode, Bowser transforms into Giga Bowser, which is a lot scarier than the normal Bowser. Giga Bowser returns in every Smash game since as Bowser's final smash. Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 had you play as a little kid protecting himself from nightmare robots in its house that were trying to kill him. This game also features the infamous bite of 1983. Sabrina. Sabrina was a character in the original Pokemon anime that trapped the main characters in a giant dollhouse. She was seen having mystical powers and had a creepy appearance. Minecraft mobs. While not the most scary nowadays, way back when we were all little kids, the Minecraft mobs were a bit creepy. The ones that freaked me out the most were the zombies, zombie villagers, and of course the gas. Their screeches were just terrible. <coughs> creepypasta. This one's very broad and is just talking about the general idea of creepypasta. Whether it be Candle Cove, Happy Appy, Slenderman, Sonic.exe, or any of the other classic creepypastas, there was probably at least one that freaked you out as a kid. Luigi's Mansion Beta Game Over. The bait of Luigi's Mansion is something that has a legendary status on the internet. Little footage has been seen from it, and the creepypastas and fan theories portray the game to be really creepy. A scene from an old trailer of the game portrays a depressed zombie-like Luigi standing outside the mansion. Many people thought that this was the original Game Over screen. Vulgar Mario Sprite Animations this entry is referring to the plethora of Mario sprite animations that were not meant for kids, including one that's coming up later on this list. Haunted Gaming. This entry refers to the creepypasta series Haunted Gaming, made by Mudahar of Some Ordinary Gamers. As a kid, I thought that Some Ordinary Gamers created all creepypastas that they read, leading me to dislike the channel and Mudahar as a whole. Scary Car Commercial. This is a classic. This video is a commercial for an energy coffee drink. The point of the commercial was to scare the viewer and to get their heart pumping, like, as if they would have drank this coffee drink. The first upload of it on YouTube tells you to watch the car carefully and listen to the audio, only for a zombie to pop out. Inflation scenes. This entry is referring to the scenes in media where a character's body gets inflated. Not much more than that. k 4 for animations. Gayforia was a YouTube channel who would release animations of cartoon characters eating each other whole. The videos got way more views than they deserved, both from innocent kids just clicking a video with a familiar character that had a weird thumbnail, to people who were into that kind of thing. Later down the line, lots of kids who watched these videos developed vor fetishes. 
Spanish MS Paint SpongeBob animations. This refers to many weird and sometimes creepy Microsoft Paint animations of SpongeBob that were usually made by Spanish speaking people. Scary Maze Game. The scary Maze Game lives on in infamy as something that we all got scared by or scared someone with. The game presents as a simple brain test as just a maze. You go through some pretty easy mazes until you reach a difficult area. Halfway through it, the face of the girl from The Exorcist shows up and a loud scream plays. Good stuff. Zim harvests his peers inside him. This refers to the episode Dark Harvest from the Nickelodeon show Invader Zim. The show was already on the darker side, which is why you always see emo girls wearing Hot Topic brand shirts in the show, but this episode was darker than the rest. In this episode, Zim harvests his classmates' organs, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Scar's death. This entry refers to the death of Scar, the antagonist of the Lion King. It's a pretty violent scene in an otherwise kid-friendly movie. Sailor Moon Villains The villains of Sailor Moon had some creepy moments, but weren't overall that bad in my opinion. But if you were a little kid seeing some of the creepier moments these characters had, I can see how that could stick with you. Ouija. Ouija. Oh man. You had to be there. Ouija was a huge meme in the YouTube poop community. The original Ouija is from the PC port of Mario is Missing. This sprite of Luigi was spread all over the internet and nicknamed Ouija for its creepy appearance. However, what really made him creepy was the Ouija virus. Ouija! If you got the Ouija virus, then your head would turn into Ouija's. There was also a Ouija computer virus, which scared me out of downloading free arcade games from the internet. Missing No. Missing No was a glitch Pokemon in the original Pokemon game. It had a glitched appearance and an overall mysterious and creepy vibe, which was incredibly creepy for some younger kids learning about it. Spongebob close-ups. Remember those scenes in Spongebob where they would zoom in on a character and have a very gross slash grotesque version of that character or thing? Well, as a little kid that stuff was creepy. Imagine being like three years old and seeing this. Spongebob Flying Dutchman So, this entry is referring to the Flying Dutchman from Spongebob. It's pretty self-explanatory, but if you don't know, this character has some pretty creepy moments and puts Spongebob and Patrick through some pretty bad stuff. There's also an episode where he's Spongebob's roommate and he transforms into very creepy forms, which I know definitely scared a lot of kids. Bloody Stick Figure Animations Back in the 2000s, stick figures fighting was the coolest thing for some reason. Lots of these animations were bloody and violent, which scared lots of kids, including me. Nowadays, these videos are very, very nostalgic, but back then they were pretty scary to some. Booba. Booba was an old show that was kind of similar to Teletubbies. I personally loved it back when I was like two or three years old, but seeing footage of it nowadays, I can totally see how kids found this creepy. It's just weird and doesn't make sense most of the time. I can totally imagine being a younger kid, seeing this late at night or early in the morning and just being scared and confused by the weird flashing lights and colors. Honestly, I don't know what they were thinking. Family Guy. This is pretty self-explanatory, but some might be confused by it. When I was a kid, I was frequently warned not to watch shows like Family Guy, The Simpsons, and South Park, as they were inappropriate and scary. Family Guy itself went through a super edgy phase in the 2000s, and lots of kids were witness to very violent and bloody scenes when watching the show either with an older sibling or maybe on Adult Swim when the kid wasn't supposed to be watching. I can totally see why people suggested this. Happy Appy Happy Appy was an incredibly popular creepypasta about an old Nick Jr. TV show about a claymation apple on a rusty stick helping kids with their injuries. Eventually, the show gets all evil and starts to predict real-world actual tragedies and depicts kids getting hurt. The writer then starts getting stalked by the creator of the show, who's like a monster guy or something. It's not a great story, but at the time it was very creepy, and I thought it might have actually existed. I remember looking at old YouTube videos online claiming to display real footage of the show, and obviously they were fake, but it was still cool to think about. THX Logo. Here, let me just play it. This thing scared a lot of kids because of the loud sound. I personally always liked the logo since it would usually play before my Star Wars and Toy Story DVDs so I knew I was in for something good after it, 
but there were many, many comments talking about how much this scared them, and I, I, I get it. Often the sound was way louder than the rest of the audio coming from the TV, so it could really just come as a shock. Twilight goes crazy. This is referring to an episode of My Little Pony by the name of Lesson Zero, where after trying very hard to solve a friendship problem that isn't there, Twilight snaps and decides to make one. The following scenes show her being crazy with this face. Yeah, I remember this freaking me out back in the day and it was a huge meme in the brony community. The Glitch. The Glitch was an old video from the channel Corridor Digital. It was basically a video game crossover with a bunch of different characters suffering through a glitchy world. The scariest scene in my opinion is this one of Mario clipping through the floor. His face starts to get all deformed and creepy as he mutters his final words being help me. Eventually, Minecraft Steve unplugs the world and the video ends. I was always fascinated with this video, finding it through the kids react video on it, and yeah, it was, it was pretty scary. The House of the Dead Games the House of the Dead is a series of arcade games where you shoot zombies and save survivors. The games are awesome, but being a little kid seeing one of them at the arcade, movie theater, or bowling alley could be pretty creepy. I think just the whole concept of having zombies coming at you and blasting them to bloody bits is pretty disturbing for a younger kid. The House of the Dead is best known online thanks to the terrible voice acting in the second game. I've been waiting for you, friends. Goldman! Do you know what you're doing? I'm fully aware of what I'm doing. Can't you see? Man committed a sin, disturbing the life cycle of nature. The original sin that man is responsible to. To protect the life cycle. Happy Wheels. Oof, this one hits close to home. Happy Wheels is an incredibly popular game that was all over YouTube back in the early 2010s. The game basically consisted of the player trying to direct someone on a vehicle through an obstacle course made to kill them. What made the game scary to me and many, many other kids was the gore. Though unrealistic, the blood and guts disturbed a lot of kids and that's why the community suggested it. Sonic.exe Sonic.exe is a classic creepypasta about an evil copy of Sonic. The story itself was and is terrible, but there was some pretty creepy imagery involved. What scared me the most is the game that someone made to go along with the story. The game had some pretty creepy imagery, including this image. This I am God screen really just I, just stayed in my mind whenever I was trying to go to sleep. This of course scared tons of kids and solidly enforced itself in our collective memory. There are a bunch of sequels to the story and they're all pretty terrible. New Sponge This entry is referring to a scene in Spongebob Squarepants where Spongebob does a commercial shoot and gets used as an actual sponge. This scared lots of kids and especially me. I was probably like 2 or 3 years old when I saw this and it made me never want to watch Spongebob again. Seeing Spongebob in pain being used for disgusting things was always very disturbing. We are like brothers, but closer. This entry is referring to this scene from Spongebob. Because you and me, we're like brothers, only closer. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird and kind of unsettling. I personally find it pretty funny, but I could totally see how lots of people could find it creepy. Toy Story Monkey. Let's be real. This monkey is terrifying. When I first saw Toy Story 3 in the theaters, I just looked away because of how scary I found it. Honestly, I feel like the animators purposely made this monkey terrifying to really make it feel like a threat. The monkey itself is actually a real life toy, which is uh, just as creepy in real life. I also want to mention that these little monkeys were used as grenades in the Call of Duty Zombies franchise, and they scared kids there too. Honestly, like... When they first made this toy, it wasn't made to be scary. This was supposed to be a children's toy for kids to play with. But, I... It's so bizarre. Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit. This was a movie about Wallace and Gromit starting a pest control business. I'm not gonna spoil it, but eventually Wallace turns into a rabbit, which scared a lot of kids, including my friend Will. I know you're watching, Will. But yeah, it was actually pretty scary to a lot of kids. The fact that it's stop motion alone makes it pretty creepy on its own, but the imagery and story are pretty scary as well. Herobrine. Herobrine was the number one boogeyman of early Gen Z kids. The story goes that someone playing Minecraft saw a strange figure with a default skin and no eyes. The player posted it on the Minecraft forums, but it got deleted. He later emailed Notch, the creator of Minecraft, asking if he had a brother. Notch responds with, I used to, but he is no longer with us. 
Many, many kids fell for this, and there was a whole ton of fake Hero Brian videos, including this one that I made when I was nine. Chef gets boiled alive ad. This was a public service announcement that aired on some children television networks. It featured a chef talking to the camera as if it's an interview. She picks up a pot full of boiling oil and then slips, leading the oil to fall on her skin. She screams and it shows a shot of her face with the skin peeling off. Yeah, this scared the shit out of me when I was a little kid. Let's move on. I Feel Fantastic I Feel Fantastic is a famous creepy video about an android woman singing about feeling fantastic. For some, this is incredibly disturbing. Others think it's funny, and others are in the middle. That's where I find myself. The video has a made-up backstory saying that the video creator is a serial killer. He wishes that his victims would say that they felt fantastic as he was killing them. The story also goes that the clothes on the robot are the clothes of the victims. The shot of the backyard is where they were buried. This is not true, but it is a fun creepypasta. Tom goes to hell. The old Tom and Jerry cartoons were really a product of their time. The unending cartoon violence wouldn't really fit today. But that's just cartoon violence, nothing genuinely scary. Except for the time that Tom went to hell. There are a couple scenes of the devil torturing Tom, and the imagery of this cartoon is, well, pretty creepy. That would definitely scare any kid who didn't know what was going on. Ow Oni Ow Oni. This is a freeware role-playing horror video game. The game features puzzle and RPG elements that revolve around a boy named Hiroshi who is trapped with his friends in a haunted mansion and stalked by a monster. This game was played by big YouTubers such as PewDiePie and Markiplier. Said YouTubers have a large audience of kids, so it makes sense that kids would be scared by this uh, and the nightmarish imagery in the game. DNA Productions DNA Productions is the studio behind Jimmy Neutron. I think this entry on the iceberg refers to the logo with a short animation of three-eyed monkeys saying, Hi, I'm Paul. You can see how this could totally scare kids who were just watching cartoons on Nick. The Shrexorcist Shrexorcist is a parody of The Exorcist on the Halloween special showcase, Scared Shrekless. The Shrexorcist sees Shrek trying to exorcise Pinocchio as he was supposedly possessed. Turns out it's just Jiminy Cricket inside his head. Pinocchio proceeds to crush Jiminy Cricket. Clearly, this could be really creepy to kids just wanting to watch some funny Shrek shorts, but in my opinion, the short with Jinji and his evil girlfriend is way creepier than Shrek's assist. Bambi's mom is killed. If you ever watched Bambi as a kid, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sonic CD Fun is Infinite. This was a hidden screen that could be accessed by entering a code in the Sonic CD sound test screen. This features these demonic Sonic faces in a Japanese text that reads, The fun is infinite. The screen is pretty infamous online in the early 2010s. Maynard's Elevator Ad. This is a Canadian commercial for Maynard's Wine Gums. It features the head of a moose hypnotizing a man into walking into an elevator and eating wine gums. You can totally see how this would freak out any kids unfortunate enough to see it. The Wormy Close-Up. This is referring to a close-up of Spongebob and Patrick's pet butterfly, Wormy. Close-up is just footage of a butterfly close-up, but it has a weird buzzing noise in the background and makes it pretty creepy. Mr. Creepypasta FNAF Audios. These were videos portraying shows at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and other notable events in the FNAF timeline, such as The Bite of 87. These videos were out before FNAF was as big as it is today. These videos were beloved by the fandom, including me, when I was 10 years old. One Missed Call What will it sound like when you die? In One Missed Call, a chain of people receive terrifying phone messages of their own fatal moments. Though the messages can be deleted, their number is up reads the movie synopsis. Yeah, I would not want to watch this or its trailers as a kid either. Max Sugar Rush. Max Sugar Rush was a thing that would happen in the show Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. The main character, Mac, eats sugar and then goes crazy, acts like a junkie. Clearly, this is disturbing to younger kids. Three Lame Studios. 
This is a YouTube channel that would produce terrible cheap animations featuring characters that were famous at the time, i.e. Angry Birds, Undertale, Minecraft, Five Nights at Freddy's, etc. If you're a viewer of Oni Plays, then it's likely that you've heard a couple references to this bizarre YouTube channel. Adult Clay Animations This is kind of a broad one, but I feel like it's mostly referring to Simpsons Couch Gag Part 1, You're Next, by League Hardcastle. Lots of kids clicked on this video because of the innocent looking thumbnail. I was one of those kids. This is a really, really disturbing animation featuring Bart Simpson's bullies breaking into the Simpson house and brutally murdering everyone until Marge gets revenge, killing the bullies, only to bleed out. This animation is really well done, but incredibly disturbing and, and definitely something that most early Gen Z kids would remember. It, 1990. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Seeing it or scenes from it as a kid is a great source of childhood trauma. Blizzetta Boss Battle In The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, the boss battle Blizzetta had a creepy rotating face that would definitely scare a kid. Freddy Fazbear's Laugh Freddy Fazbear's laugh is that of a little girl's only slowed down. <laughs> You hear it when Freddy moves around in the original Five Nights at Freddy's game. This would lead it to get stuck in people's heads and freak them out. Judge Doom's Reveal Judge Doom is the antagonist in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He is creepy as hell. He's a half-human, half-cartoon hybrid who can be crushed by a steamroller and blow himself back up. I would not want to see this guy in my dreams. SuicideMouse.avi this is a creepypasta about a lost Mickey Mouse cartoon that caused people to go crazy. There are some portrayals of it on YouTube which were very scary to me and many other kids of my age. The Scottish Anti-Drug Photograph Ad This was a commercial aired in Scotland by the name of Photograph. It shows a photo of a woman smiling that slowly shows the effects of hard drugs on the body. Her face gets super messed up and it starts displaying other faces that start to morph and distort. Very creepy stuff. Shy Guy Unmasked Ever wonder what the Shy Guy from Super Mario looked like without the mask? I sure did. This entry could be referring to some creepy art of the Shy Guy maskless, but it's most likely referring to the Shy Guy ghosts in Luigi's Mansion. You can suck the mask right off these ghosts and reveal their faces. Honestly, they aren't all that scary to me, but I can see how a younger kid might be scared by it. Violet Turns Into a Blueberry this is obviously referring to both Willy Wonk in the Chocolate Factory and Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. I can totally see a kid being scared of this scene and the existential horror it provides. What scared me most about this scene is that Willy Wonka mentions Oompa Loompa who turned into a blueberry. Said Oompa Loompa is never seen in the movie, so I always thought he just died. Coco from Animal Crossing. I mean, just look at this thing. That's creepy. Scared Shrekless. The Shrexorcist, which was that earlier entry on this iceberg, was from this special. Scared Shrekless has a ton of scary moments, everything from the abandoned Duloc, the creepy play song, and of course the stories the characters tell. The one that Puss and Donkey tell always scared me as a kid. Mario Gets Possessed Mario Gets Possessed is one of those old Mario plush videos made by kids. In this video, the Mario plush gets possessed by a boo and the kids put paper on his eyes to portray it. This video is not scary nowadays, but I can see how a little kid could be scared by it. Where the Wild Things Are movie Where the Wild Things Are is a classic children's book written by Maurice Sendak. In 2009, a movie adaptation was released, and it was terrible. It was incredibly realistic looking, and for some reason, there was a lot of nightmarish imagery in the film, especially a scene where one of the Wild Things' arms gets ripped off. Yeah, I got no idea what they were thinking. The movie flopped in, in the box office and not many people actually liked it that much. It wasn't a good adaptation of the book and it was just overall disturbing. Spirit Halloween Animatronics This one is pretty self-explanatory, but it makes sense. For those who don't know, Spirit Halloween is a seasonal Halloween chain store that started in 1983. They've usually got animatronics on display that you can activate with a little stepping pad. A lot of the time, the animatronics would spring to life and just terrify kids. I remember once I was at a spirit store and I saw a kid step on the pad and get jump scared. The kid was so startled that he basically flew backwards and it was hilarious. Jurassic Park Death Scenes This one is very self-explanatory. 
The scenes in Jurassic Park where a human would get eaten alive were very frightening when you saw them as a kid. Spongebob Hot Sauce. This entry is referring to a scene of Spongebob, and yeah, it's pretty weird. Turns out this face is actually Tom Kenny, the voice actor of Spongebob. Many, many people had commented about how much this scene scared them, and yeah, I, I get it. To those who were traumatized by this, I'm sorry for bringing it back into your memory. I'm Scared. I'm Scared is a meta-horror game that protagonizes the player, putting them in a surreal first-person experience. The game is done with a pixelated art style and was played by big YouTubers like Markiplier. It's most famous for this face. Yeah, that's pretty creepy. Return of Raggedy Android. This was an episode of the Nickelodeon cartoon My Life as a Teenage Robot. To make it brief, the main character is a robot who gets treated like a robot by the people around her. She doesn't like this and wants to be treated like a real human girl. So her creator makes a skin suit that she can wear to make her look like a human. The thing clings on her like Venom from Spider-Man and it's pretty unsettling. Eventually, the exoskin very creepily attacks XJ9 while she's sleeping and it's just unnerving. Imagine a little kid watching TV only to see this. Yeah, I 100% understand why this scared so many people. I first saw the episode in 2018 and even then I was surprised that this aired on Nickelodeon. Spongebob Gorilla This entry is referring to that scene in Spongebob where Patrick dresses up as a gorilla only to reveal a live-action person in a gorilla suit tear off a Patrick skin suit. The Gorilla Man then puts Patrick and Sandy in a bag and starts smashing it against the floor and beating it up in a bunch of different ways. Eventually, the Gorilla takes Spongebob and rips him in half. Spongebob then asks what a Gorilla is doing underwater. The Gorilla then flees with a little horse guy and... Yeah, it's just very weird. The end of the scene perfectly encapsulates my feelings on it. Jonah Pumpkin Seed this entry is referring to a scene in Veggie Tales where the pirates who don't do anything and Jonah from the Bible enter an arena and get captured. They are then put in guillotines and they see a pumpkin with a face on it get smashed by the blade. Yeah, I, honestly, it's pretty violent and off-putting when watching as a little kid. You wouldn't really expect something like this from Veggie Tales. The Garfield Show Exterminator ad. This entry is referring to an episode of The Garfield Show where John Arpolga's house is full of mice. John then shows Garfield an advert for an extermination company. It shows 2D animation of mice being exterminated while a voice maniacally advertises the company's services. I used to be a huge fan of the Garfield show back in the day and I kind of remember this freaking me out. The Mayan Calendar The Mayan Calendar is a system of calendars used in pre-Columbian Mesoamerica and in many modern countries in the Guatemalan highlands. The year 2012 was suspected to be the end of the world because the Mayan Calendar ended in that year. Of course, nothing happened, but there was a lot of speculation as to what would happen, and of course, the threat of the end of the world was a very disturbing and anxiety-inducing thing to many Gen Z children. I remember learning about it through a video on that old 3DS video platform with those little dinosaur claymations. Apparently, the Mayan calendar was inaccurate, and it's actually 2021 that's supposed to be the end of the world, or, or 2022 or something, so, uh, yeah. Two Sentence Horror Stories This one is pretty self-explanatory. Two sentence horror stories are just that. The one that scared me the most goes a little something like this. I begin tucking him into bed, and he tells me, Daddy, check for monsters under my bed. I look underneath for his amusement, and I see him, another him, under the bed, looking back at me, quivering and whispering, Daddy, there's somebody on my bed. Don't hug me, I'm scared. So this was the number one requested entry. I got tons and tons of comments on every iceberg video asking why this wasn't on the list. Don't Hug Me I'm Scared is a series of videos created by British filmmakers Becky Sloan and Joseph Pelling that are uh, essentially a parody of kids shows, but they're the exact opposite. The first episode released in 2011 and it caught the eye of many, many people. If you somehow haven't seen a Don't Hug Me I'm Scared video, then I suggest that you do. Essentially, they all start off like innocent puppet shows until an inanimate object comes to life and starts singing to the puppets and teaching them a lesson. It seems fine at first, but the lessons are always very flawed and incorrect. The series has spawned tons and tons of fan theories, with the biggest ones being about how media influences the youth in negative ways. That's a very simplified version of explaining it, since there were tons of little hidden things in the videos, and... If you haven't watched Don't Hung Me, I'm Scared, then I suggest that you do. Yeah, maybe just pause this video, watch the series, it's very, very good. Garbage Pale Kids So this one is more of an 80s kid thing, but I know it sure scared me. Garbage Pale Kids were a brand of trading cards parodying the Cabbage Patch dolls. 
Lots of these cards had some disturbing designs and names. There was also a movie which was critically panned and had disgusting designs for the characters. I remember watching the irate gamers video on them and being really scared of the characters and that preventing me from sleeping a few times. Ren and Stimpy Ren and Stimpy was a classic Nickelodeon cartoon show that many people have fond memories of. The show had a lot of really gross humor in it, which could often be scary to younger kids. I feel like generally it was for older audiences, but a lot of younger audiences watched it as well and got scared. The creator of the show was a terrible person and a child predator. His name is John Chris Felucci. Don't support him or his work. Blame It on Jorge made a great video on the topic, so I suggest that you check that out. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Animatronics Burning Scene so, in the 2005 Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie, they added a scene that wasn't in the book or the original movie. It showed a bunch of animatronic dolls resembling the It's a Small World characters from Disney, greeting the golden ticket winners with a song. Eventually, some pyrotechnics go wrong and everything just goes up in flames. The animatronics start to melt and burn with eyeballs popping out and limbs falling off and just general scary imagery. I remember I always hated the scene whenever I watched this movie and, well, so did you guys. Thomas Bull Scene. This is referring to a scene in Thomas the Tank Engine by the name of Bullseyes. A bull stands on the tracks while a train has to pass by. I can see how this bull character is, could be kind of unnerving, just standing there, you know, when you're a tiny little kid. Uh, this entry was suggested by Jackson of the Chill Hour podcast, which I was on. As the name implies, it's very chill, so if you're interested, I would suggest checking it out. Shallow Waters. School PSAs. So this one is pretty self-explanatory, and I'm sure that you can see how something like this would be terrifying. I don't want this video to get hidden, since this is very sensitive material, but I think you guys would know how and why this would be traumatizing. Black Licorice So, back in the day, Nickelodeon offered little flash games on their website called Clickamajigs. This one was for Halloween and featured little characters with the faces of kids going around trick-or-treating. You got a bowl of caramel and black licorice. If you give the kids caramel, they are happy. But eventually, you run out of caramel. If you give a kid black licorice, this is what happens. Black licorice. <laughs> yeah, what the hell were they thinking? Who greenlit this and thought it was okay for kids? It was kind of a prank, because you could then email the game to a friend and prank them, you know, having them not expect the jump scare, but still. House Fancy Toenail Scene Alright, so this one's a bit of a gory one, so I'm just warning you now that this might be a bit triggering for some. So, for whatever reason, around Season 6 of Spongebob, they made this big shift in humor where there was a lot of just really gross or really mean-spirited jokes in them. In this episode, Spongebob is helping Squidward move furniture. They're moving a couch around, and unfortunately, said couch falls directly on Squidward's toe. The leg of the couch keeps falling on its toe, and eventually his toenail gets ripped out. Yeah, I, I don't know what they were thinking either. The scene is pretty hard to watch, and I don't really see how it's funny. The scene has been disturbing kids for many years, and it probably will continue to do so for years. Conquers Bad Fur Day Zombies Alright, so Conker's Bad Fur Day was a game that parodied classic rare games like Banjo-Kazooie. The game looked family friendly but was completely the opposite, and that was the joke. Some kids were bought the game by parents who couldn't tell that it wasn't your standard kid-friendly collectathon. The game was released in 2001 for the Nintendo 64 and later remade on the Xbox in 2005 with better graphics and gameplay. In these games, there were zombies that are honestly kinda creepy looking. Even though kids weren't supposed to play this game, I still feel bad for the kids who did. These little cute characters with their eyeballs popping out are just... yeah. Brian Griffin's Bad Trip Alright, so in the Family Guy episode, Seahorse Seashell Party, Brian Griffin takes mushrooms and has a really bad trip. We see the entire thing with animation that is far better than normal Family Guy. And it's very, very nightmarish. One of the most disturbing things is when Brian finds Peter Griffin being cooked alive on a rotisserie while singing the wheels on the bus. The imagery and sounds are very disturbing, I imagine some kids might have just been flipping through channels only to find this disturbing shit. Mac Tonight Alright, so this one probably relates more to older generations, but apparently this scared some of my audience. Mac Tonight was a McDonald's mascot back in the 1980s, and you might recognize him from St. Pepsi's Late Night Delight album. 
More specifically, the music video for the song Enjoy Yourself. I could see why Mac tonight could be seen as creepy, but to me he's actually pretty cool. The commercials are really cool and have an awesome vaporwave vibe going on, so if you're into that type of thing, I'd suggest checking them out. Gregory's Room Gregory's Room is a creepypasta about a Nick Jr. show about a little character talking about how much fun he and the viewer will have together in his room. A YouTuber by the name of Seinfeld Spitzstein, creator of the Jimmy Neutron Happy Family Happy Hour video, made a video displaying this alleged pilot, and it's pretty creepy. Eventually, Gregory states that it'll just be the two of you, alone in his room. No parents, no police, no one to hear you scream. He needs love. Let's do a quick little hydration drinking game, alright? I say creepy a lot in these videos, you guys have pointed it out. Every time I say creepy, take a shot of water. You'll be very hydrated by the end of this. Tails Doll The Tails Doll was a character in the game Sonic R that was just... strange. The character creeped out a lot of kids playing, but that's not all. The reason most people are familiar with this character is the creepypasta that came out about it. Nowadays the story is pretty silly, but it sure used to be creepy. It ends with a bloody plush form of the character appearing in the writer of the story's room and, and killing them, I think. Yeah, I don't know, it's... it's kind of silly. Alfred's Playhouse Alright, this is a really weird, bizarre, and disturbing animation series from Newgrounds. It's about a little character named Alfred going through a bunch of crazy set pieces, and honestly, it's kinda hard to watch. There are multiple episodes and the whole thing is just really nonsensical and weird, and I'm glad I didn't have to watch through this as a kid. I feel like it would just really upset me. Ponies sliding into boxes gone wrong. Alright, so back in the day, the brony community was booming. Ponies were all over the internet, and if you were in that community, then you were having a lot of fun. If somehow you don't know what a brony is, then let me just quickly let you know. Brony is a mix of bro and pony. The term was created by fans of the show on the internet message board 4chan. Generally, bronies are just male adult fans of My Little Pony, but kids can be bronies too. A female version is a pegasister. The community was massive online, so much that there were multiple brony conventions in real life. The biggest and most official one being BronyCon, which I personally had a ton of fun at when I was 10 years old. Online brony fan videos were a huge thing, and there was this one series of animations that were beloved by the community, including me. Ponies sliding into boxes. There was this one little parody of the animations where it looked normal until one of the ponies slides into a box of nails. I remember loving the original animations and always being disturbed whenever the bloody version would play, and I'm sure that many, many other kids were. Dead Bart. Dead Bart is a creepypasta about, shocker, Bart Simpson passing away. In the story, the writer asks Simpsons creator Matt Groening about it. Matt then starts crying and gives him a DVD that doesn't work at first but eventually does. See, the thing is, the story explains that the reason that some episodes of The Simpsons are counted weirdly, officially, is because there's a missing episode, being Dead Bart. The writer then sees a weird Simpsons episode from this DVD, where Bart Simpson breaks an airplane window and gets sucked out of it and dies. The Simpsons visit his grave where his body lays, and then they start crying as the camera pans out only to show a bunch of graves displaying guest stars of The Simpsons, showing their death dates, which to some are accurate, such as Michael Jackson. This frame of Homer's face melting off from an episode of The Simpsons is often showed alongside this creepypasta since he kinda looks like Bart in it. Overall, the story freaked me out despite not watching The Simpsons. It doesn't really hold up that well in terms of a story, but I still remember it fondly. Evil Pickle On October 16th, 2007, the video The Evil Pickle was released. It features a gardener picking cucumbers from her garden, only for one to grow and kill her. Said Pickle then finds a boy playing piano and kills him too. A boy reading Harry Potter then starts fighting the evil Pickle with a banana, eventually killing the Pickle and eating it. Later, in 2018, a video by the name of Evil Pickle the Movie was released on the YouTube channel WCK Life, featuring two boys getting killed by an evil Pickle Rick plush. There are some sequels to this video and they are all gold. Both of these evil Pickle videos are extremely charming and I would just recommend giving them both a watch. Judge Doom's Death Judge Doom is the antagonist in the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The character first gets steamrolled and then melted in a very brutal way. If you take a look at the comments of the clip, you'll see people recounting how much this scared them. We Crash. This one is something that I can totally personally relate to. The Nintendo Wii would sometimes just crash. Said crash wouldn't just make the Wii turn off, no. 
the Wii would freeze and play a really loud high-pitched tone. This always scared me a lot, since most of the time it would happen would be while using the Amazon Prime app or Netflix app, which made whatever you were watching a lot more quiet than other things on the Wii. So whenever it would crash, the sound was really, really loud. How many of you guys out there experienced this? Lost episodes. This entry is referring to the subgenre of creepypastas talking about episodes of what are usually kid shows that are dark and creepy and often have a character be evil or die or something. Often these creepypastas are very cheap and low effort stories with super predictable plots and everything. Although I do remember being scared by quite a lot of these stories. When I was like 8 or so, it definitely makes sense that lots of other kids were scared by these too. Seeing dark perversions of cartoons always freaked me out and made me see the originals in a different light a lot of the time. Bloody Jigglypuff This entry is referring to this iconic creepypasta picture of the Pokemon Jigglypuff with creepy bloody eyes. I don't have much to say about this, but I do want to show you this video by Adam Tiller. This image was used for the video displaying the backwards version of the Lavender Town theme, and it's definitely pretty creepy. Madness Combat Madness Combat is a series of flash animations made by Matt Jolly, also known as Crinkles. The reason these things exist is to display excessive violence, and as a kid, I really didn't like gore and bloody violence, so I can totally see someone being really disturbed by this series. There's also a Madness Combat Newgrounds game, which I just recently played for the first time, and it's actually very fun. These characters have made a resurgence recently, and I'm not exactly sure why. They might be in Friday Night Funkin' or something, but lots of people are especially interested in Tricky the Clown. Um, why that is, I'm not totally sure, but I'm gonna put him in the thumbnail so people click. Happy Mask Salesman In The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, the character by the name of the Happy Mask Salesman has a very creepy look to him. He's got a bunch of kind of weird masks on his back, including one of Mario. There are also some creepypastas about the guy being evil, so I totally understand being scared by this guy. I think I first learned about him through the Peanut Butter Gamers G-Files episode on him, which is a YouTuber that I don't watch anymore, but if he brought back that series, I might check him out again. Bloody Mario Games When I think Bloody Mario Games, I think Super Mario Flash. When I was a little kid, I didn't have any Mario games that I could play on console, so I spent a lot of time on those old Flash game websites, playing lots of different games. My favorite of the bunch being Mario Combat, which was awesome. But Mario Flash had a disturbing twist. As mentioned earlier, I really didn't like bloody things, so whenever I accidentally found this game and started playing it, the bloody death of the Goombas in Mario always disturbed me, and I always called my mom over to help me get rid of the game. To be clear, I was probably like 6 or 7 years old whenever this was happening, so seeing stuff like this was pretty bad. I'm sure there's a lot of other bloody Mario games, but this is the one that stands out to me the most. Game Boy Camera The Game Boy Camera was exactly what it sounded like. A tiny camera that could take pictures when inserted into a Game Boy. Hell, it even used to be the smallest camera in the Guinness Book of World Records. But nothing about that sounds creepy, right? Well, since this was a Nintendo thing, it wasn't just a camera. The Game Boy camera acted like a game, meaning that you could take pictures of people and then put them into little games. There was an RPG style section with a couple different options, one of them being Run. If you decide to click Run, then you could be greeted by these faces. Yeah. These faces were pretty popular in the online creepy community, and that's where I first saw them. When I was a little kid, I thought these guys were really, really disturbing, and they, they definitely kept me up at night a few times. There's something about the low quality of the pictures, and the way that they're drawn, and... I don't know, it's, it's just weird. The Chuckle Hut The Chuckle Hut is a video uploaded in 2011 of an animated woman shaking around with a stretched out mouth with creepy music playing in the background. To be completely honest, this video has a pretty strong nightmare or fever dream vibe to it, and it's certainly very weird. I don't really know what the point of it is, there might be some hidden lore to it, but I certainly don't know what it is. Fun Video TV Okay, so I feel like this entry is going to bring back a lot of long-forgotten memories for a lot of you guys. So back in like 2012, the song Gangnam Style was the biggest thing in the world. All ages loved it, I certainly loved it, all my friends loved it, and something that was also very popular was Angry Birds. Same goes for that. So Fun Video TV decided to make a video combining them, and yeah. Um... The video has tons of views, and the person made multiple other videos that were basically the same thing. 
There were also a lot of really weird, creepy videos featuring horror movie characters just dancing around and just doing overall weird things. Also, a lot of the character models just looked terrible, and I feel like I got freaked out by a few of these videos back in the day. I run my mouth about how terrible YouTube Kids content is nowadays, but was what we watched really all that much better? I mean, this shit's literally the same crap you find on YouTube Kids. It's some weird stuff. How to Basic This one is pretty self-explanatory if you've ever seen a How to Basic video, but if you haven't, then, well, you're gonna see some weird stuff. How to Basic is pretty much a crazy bait and switch. You'll click on a video expecting, well, a tutorial video only to get what it seems like you clicked on, at first. Soon after, shit hits the fan and the video gets crazy. Many eggs are thrown, things are destroyed, and full-on chaos proceeds. I remember finding this video through the React video done on it. The videos displayed on that were pretty tame, so I didn't expect to see a big fish being desecrated, which I know scared me and a lot of other kids. It wasn't really scary, I guess. It was more just disturbing and a disregard for this animal's carcass. The channel is still going strong to this day with some really high budget videos coming out. McDonald's Funky Chicken. Alright, just uh, check this out. Okay, did you know there's a dance called a funky chicken? Yeah, now flap your arms. Yeah, bring your knees. Yo, do the funky chicken. Funky chicken, yeah. McDonald's Chicken McNuggets. They can't dance, but the only meat they contain is chicken breast. Some fun, some food, it's all inside this happy meal. Yeah... What the hell? What were they thinking? Why? I do not know. I feel like many people saw this and then never saw it again and couldn't find it online and then just, I guess, shook it off as a dream. But no, this abomination is very, very real. The designs are just so... Disgusting, and I guess if they wanted to make a commercial that stuck with people, uh, they, they sure did. Godzilla NES Godzilla NES is a very iconic creepypasta that many people really, really love, and some really hate. It's got a very controversial ending, which I won't spoil here since I suggest that you check out the story, but basically the story is about a Godzilla NES game that seems normal at first, but then a bunch of weird things start happening. The imagery itself is very creepy and I remember watching the Mullet Mike Sticky Paddle video on it and being freaked out by it. Halo Flood So this is referring to the parasitical alien species from the Halo games by the name of the Flood. The way in which they affect things and move and multiply is really disgusting and it works so well in the game. I played my first Halo game at I think 14 and even then I was like jeez this is intense. The Flood come in different forms for you to kill. Halo fans, don't get mad at me if I don't explain this in the best way, since I don't know much about Halo lore, I just like shooting things. In my opinion, the grossest of these are the small flood things. However, what I think disturb kids the most are these more zombie-like forms. You see, these flood creatures would attack both humans and aliens, slowly infecting them and turning them into these really grotesque versions of their former selves. Honestly, I think the flood are still creepy to this day. Peppa Pig and the Bacon Peppa Pig and the Bacon is a Spanish animation featuring Peppa Pig tasting bacon and becoming obsessed with it. She ends up eating her father and eventually turning the whole Peppa Pig family into bacon. The animation was pretty similar to the actual show, so many kids watched the video and were traumatized by it, including me. Tarzan Whammy On the game show Whammy, you could spin a wheel and get a bad result. Said bad result was Tarzan creepy little devil man who would have to splat against the screen or hit an elephant. Mr. Davey's MLP Animations Mr. Davey was a YouTuber with an animation style that was basically indistinguishable from the actual My Little Pony show. His animations, such as Smile HD, Derpy Gets Pranked, and Cupcakes were incredibly violent and disturbing. I do not suggest looking them up after this. I'm gonna say do not research. Spongebob and Patrick's Spongebob is the old internet name for disturbing Spongebob art. Patrick's is this creepy rendition of a super realistic Patrick. They're both creepy as hell and certainly terrified lots of kids. Violin Girl Jump Scare This entry is referring to a scene in Courage the Cowardly Dog. This scene is straight up scary with the uncanny stop motion animation and the loud sound. Jeff Dunham's Puppets 
Jeff Dunham is a comedian that uses puppets for his shows. His most famous character, Ahmed, is a dead terrorist. And uh, he was definitely very creepy to a lot of kids growing up. Morbid PSAs. Like the Chef Boiling entry from earlier, morbid scary PSAs were pretty prevalent in the 2000s. Many of these disturbed kids since for whatever reason they would err on child-friendly channels sometimes. Zombie Avengers. Zombie Avengers is an old YouTube animation featuring the Avengers as zombies. This video has a comedic tone, but the imagery would be creepy if you saw it as a kid. Arnold's Nightmare. This entry is most likely referring to the scene in Hey Arnold, where Arnold falls asleep and sees him and his friend Gerald as very old men on the bus. It then pans over to Arnold's grandpa, who looks terrifying as his jaw proceeds to fall off. Jason Voorhees Unmasked. I mean, just look at this guy, that's super creepy. There are multiple different varieties, but this Toxic Avenger looking one is probably the worst. Arnold's head freezes in space. This is referring to that one episode of the Magic School Bus where they go to space. Arnold gets upset, and then this happens. Yo! Unsettling Simpson scene slash parodies. This could be anything from Treehouse of Horror to that scene where Homer's face melts off. There are quite a few unsettling scenes in The Simpsons. Jimmy Neutron Happy Family Happy Hour. Jimmy Neutron Happy Family Happy Hour is a YouTube animation created by Seinfeld Spitzstein. I would suggest watching it for yourself. This video is iconic. It's so quotable that me and my friends still quote it to this day. The creepiness adds so much to the video and I highly recommend it. M is Bad. M is Bad is one of those classic Mario sprite animations. It takes a very twisted turn and I will not describe the events of said video in this video. Luituma Onion Smash. This video is a parody of the classic Ivan Polka video. In this video, the woman's hand gets twisted as she spins the leak. It then reaches its peak and spins back, hitting her in the face. She's then beat up and the song plays in slow motion. I don't know what it is about this video specifically, but it's just disturbing, even to this day. McDonald Nose Ad. This ad is just weird. It starts off with a man smiling. It starts to pan and pan and pan, while creepy music plays in the background. It then shows that his nose is connected to another man's nose when an alarm clock starts ringing and it tells you to buy McDonald's coffee. What the Freddy Krueger kills. This entry is pretty self-explanatory. Freddy Krueger has some pretty gruesome kills. Freiburg. This entry is referring to an episode of Steven Universe where a fast food mascot comes to life and becomes evil. Pretty creepy. Humpty Dumpty Kinder Ad. I always loved this video as a kid. So I'm just gonna play it here and let you make up your own mind. Chocka Dooby! Dumpty Chocka Dooby! Pop Swabble! Toy! Yodel Yum and Choco Scrum with multi Pop Swabble dies! Oh, Grubby! Me Scrubble now! Snoggo! Whee! Kinder Surprise from Ferrero. Mario ROM. This is a classic creepypasta about a ROM someone downloaded of Super Mario World. The game is simply titled Mario. Eventually, the OP finds this creepy picture. The ROM is actually real and not just a story. Jason Voorhees Kills. This is referring to all the kills from the Friday the 13th horror movie series. Not much else to say except for you probably shouldn't watch Friday the 13th as a kid. DeviantArt. Whether you browse the website yourself or you watch Solar Sands look at cringe, you probably remember seeing some really weird, mostly furry slash fetish related stuff on DeviantArt. And you probably wish you didn't see it. Flapjack Cat. In the show Marvelous Adventures of Flapjack, there is an evil cat with this terrifying face. That show was weird. Syriac. Syriac is a YouTube channel who's been making these incredibly strange and disturbing YouTube videos for years. His videos definitely scared me and many others as a kid. Not without my handbag. This is incredibly strange and dark stop motion made by Ardman Animations, the people who made Wallace and Gromit. In this animation, a dead aunt refuses to go to hell without her handbag. I know if I saw this as a kid, I wouldn't be terrified. 
Let Me Hear Your War Cry. Let Me Hear Your War Cry is an edited scene from the movie, Full Metal Jacket. In this video, the soldiers' faces are replaced with these disturbing mannequin things as they scream creepy high-pitched screams. I never watched this video as a kid, but I always saw the thumbnail and it freaked me out. The Scarecrow's Hallucinations. The Scarecrow in the Dark Knight movie makes people hallucinate, and it's pretty creepy. Not much more than that. Call of Duty. Call of Duty should not be played by kids, but it is. By a lot of kids, especially back in the 2000s. There was a lot of both violent and scary content in these games, so it's no wonder it's on the list. Puberty. This entry is kind of a weird one, but I think you'll understand why it's here. Puberty is generally something that's really hard for a lot of kids to go through. When your body changes in ways that you don't expect out of nowhere, it's kind of disturbing and weird. I remember when my voice started to change when I was like 11 or 12, I, I hated it. I, I felt like my new voice was like bad or wrong somehow. And of course my experience is with the male side of things, but another weird one is when you start to quote unquote grow facial hair. Like you, you know, quote unquote facial hair like a little tiny little fuzz stash and, and you cut it and then you bloody all your face up because you never shaved before and yeah. If you've gone through this then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Which leads me to today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. Alright everyone, so I was sent some of the best products I've ever got from any sponsor ever, okay? So, Manscaped came out with a new, amazing, premium line of men's, uh, smelling good products, you know? And these are them! So, shampoo and conditioner, two in one, because we're men, we don't like using mm -hmm. separate things. It smells really good. You want your boyfriend to use an actually good two-in-one? Because they won't oh, use anything. There else. it is. They all got these nice metal bottles. Good for the environment. Because we love the environment here. And we got the Manscaped body wash. This thing is awesome. Whole body wash, you know. It's again, it smells really, really good. They're using natural products. It's like vegan. It's good for your skin. And uh if yeah. Skin. Ultra premium cologne. Scented. So it smells like you're wearing cologne, but it's actually like not overwhelming. I used to use this crap here. I thought it was great at the time, but looking back on it, it is not. Um, but it's not great. Not great scent. Very plasticky, very, very, you know, synthetic, very red. But this stuff, black and gold, it actually smells really good. Um, you don't even really feel it on, but it's there. Like, it'll, it's got a good, like, kind of sweat protection to it. And it's, it's legit. Um, I'd highly recommend it. Alongside that, we've got hydrating body spray. Yeah. This stuff is awesome. Um, this is really good, too, because you can put a bunch of it on. I don't like body spray in general, right? I've tried to use it, like, uh, certain products, like hatchet body spray. You know what I'm talking about. That stuff isn't great, it's overwhelming, it's it's too much, but... It's a lot. You this ever smell the middle school boy? That's what it smells I like. I have not done that, but... <laughs> don't do that! This stuff here does not smell like a middle school boy. This smells like a man. Um, and it's also smooth too, you don't really feel it. You spray some on, you're supposed to rub it in. And then you're good for the day because it sticks around too, and it's not overwhelming. Um, it's a really good scent. And if you buy the soul in a package, you'll actually get a free gift being Manscaped Lip Balm. Lip Balm? Yeah. What man do you know wears lip balm now? He does. I do. Can you believe that? A man without chap lips? It's great. They're just these little lip balms. Nice, high quality. They're great. Love them. So if you want everything you just saw and more, of course, you can use my code in the description, code Raymundo, for 20% off your entire order, right? Which is pretty good, I'd say. 20% off gets you all of that for a discounted price. It's great. If you want to smell good and you want to be successful and you want an emo girlfriend, <laughs> then yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. My code works with everything on the website. Not just this package of stuff here, but you can work with the razors, you can work with the, you know, the, the, the nose trimmers, the ball trimmers, all that stuff. It'll work, it'll be great. So I would highly suggest for your own sake, you go ahead and use my code in the description. Helps me out, of course, but it also helps you out, really. Uh, Cause this is actually for your body. Manscaped, always use the right tools for the job. All right, now back to the iceberg. Mariana Margot Gleskor. This entry is referring to an old YouTube video, which is kind of an urban legend on the internet. 
Mediana Mardegard Gleskorv is a cursed YouTube video that was deleted by YouTube. If you look it up now, you can find it, but what you find is not the full thing. Allegedly, those who watched the original video pulled their eyes out and mailed them to YouTube headquarters. What? Yeah, the story never really made any sense, especially the eye thing. Like, how the hell can you mail them to YouTube if you don't have eyes? It's... I don't know. It's dumb. But the video itself is nothing special, and the alleged full version is on YouTube for you to watch, and no. The video will not make you mail your eyeballs to YouTube. Fishmen. Alright, I feel like this one is going to bring back memories for tons of people who forgot about this video. Fishmen is a classic video uploaded on the channel Hackor, who also created the iconic Here Comes Pac-Man video. The Fishmen is a parody of the song It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas, and displays a future apocalyptic world filled with these humanoid fishmen. The special effects are pretty good, especially considering the fact that this video was released in 2009. The video is undeniably charming and I love it, but it's pretty unnerving. The video is based off of the story Shadow Over Innsmouth by H.P. Lovecraft, which on its own is pretty scary. I watch this video every Christmas season and it always gets me in the holiday spirit. If you haven't seen the video, then I highly suggest that you check it out. Feel Good Ink Music Video So, Gorillaz. It's pretty much the coolest band out there. I'm a huge fan, and lots of you guys are too. If you don't know about Gorillaz, then you'll probably be confused as to why the real band members never show up. Well, that's because the band is just fictional animated characters. In 2005, they released a song by the name of Feel Good Inc., and it's a damn good song. It blew up and had a music video to go along with it, which has some pretty dark themes. When I first listened to Feel Good Inc., I didn't really like the song because the laugh kind of freaked me out, but nowadays, Feel Good Inc. is one of my favorite songs, and I even played it on stage live when I was 13. Gorillaz is awesome, but sometimes it has some dark themes. I also want to give an honorable mention shout out to the music video for the song Rocket. Yeah, I don't think I have to explain this one. Liquid Generation Tube. Liquid Generation Tube was an old website that just stinks of 2000s, and not in a great way. They had a YouTube channel featuring videos from their website, which started off as a tabloidy style videos, and then later moved to top 10 videos, and then they started doing these little flash animations where some were called sabotages. The idea is that you would send a video to a friend that looked innocent at first, but then it became something dirty. Then later, they started a video series by the name of Angry Leprechaun. I'm guessing this entry was submitted because of this series. It features an angry animated leprechaun cursing and threatening the viewer. Does anyone remember this? Treats for Beasts. Treats for Beasts is an iconic YouTube channel that has been in like 50 other Iceberg videos. You probably recognize the channel from the video Beasts. The videos on this channel are all social commentary, and they all have a pretty creepy vibe to them. There are a bunch of videos all focusing on different topics, and they really appeal to that guy who loves nihilism and existential stuff. The creator of the channel clearly isn't too big of a fan of religion, and it shows. There's also a video called Who Wants to Gnaw on Human Bones, and... Yeah, I'm not really sure if this one has like a hidden meaning to it or something, but I don't know. Mimi Paper Mario. This entry is referring to the third boss of the game, Super Paper Mario. This game in general has a weird vibe to it, and might be because of the game heavily deviated from the Mario vibe or whatever, but either way, there was some weird stuff. The character Mimi, who had a cute normal appearance, turns into this without warning, and then you have to fight her. It really is a nightmarish fight because it happens out of nowhere. Fun fact, I actually lost my first tooth while playing this game. Teddy has an operation. Teddy has an operation is a classic YouTube video that I'm sure most of you have seen. It features a teddy bear getting surgery. Thing is, the bear has some really realistic looking organs, and it's all narrated by a voice that sounds like it's straight out of a storybook. Inside this teddy, there are a bunch of weird things inside of him that get pulled out of his realistic organs. The video was unwatchable me back when I was a little kid, but nowadays it's really not that bad. It's still pretty disgusting at times, but if you overlook that, then the video is actually kind of wholesome. I think it depends on the person, but I suggest that you check it out. 1,000 Ways to Die 1,000 Ways to Die is one that many, many people commented asking for it to be in this iceberg. 1,000 Ways to Die is basically a series that exists just to display people dying in a bunch of different ways. 
The series was presented in a way that resembled a documentary which made the cheesy videos seem real. Obviously, these videos are really scary and disturbing simply because of all the blood and violence, and I guess it's kind of like Final Destination the show. Raving Rabbids Original Design You're probably familiar with the Rabbids, you know, the minions of gaming. They're pretty cute and friendly looking, but they weren't originally. In the cancelled game Rayman 4, the characters had a way more threatening look and were all antagonists. I could totally see a kid being scared by these characters while watching the original trailer. Dumb Ways to Die Dumb Ways to Die is a classic subway safety PSA that blew up on YouTube. The video features these cute little characters dying in a bunch of dumb ways, some more tame than others. Of course, there ended up being a bunch of parodies of this video, some being more graphic than the original. I remember there being a real-life version that featured what seemed to be, like, real-life videos of people dying in some cases, alongside stuff from movies and games. Dumb Ways to Die also had two mobile games that were basically little mini-game fests, and they were tons of fun. If you haven't seen Dumb Ways to Die, then I highly suggest that you check it out. It really is an iconic part of internet history. If anyone else remembers the real-life Dumb Ways to Die video, please let me know, because I really I can't find it anywhere on YouTube, and, I, and I'm sure it was on YouTube. But I guess it just might end up being some sort of lost media at this point. Mad Zombie. This entry is referring to a parody of the movie Bambi from the old Cartoon Network show Mad, which has another segment from it later on in this list. Zombie depicts Bambi's mom, who was killed in the movie, back from the grave. Eventually, the hunter who shot her appears, and they get locked into the same room, and the zombie deer presumably kills the man. Need I say more? This Mad show was basically a robot chicken for kids. And I say that with quotation marks because this definitely had a lot of scary and disturbing moments that actually seemed like things that you'd find on Robot Chicken. The Centrifuge Brain Project. Alright, I feel like this one's gonna hit really hard for some of you guys. The Centrifuge Brain Project is a short film on YouTube showing what's essentially a mad scientist talking about all the crazy theme park rides he's designed. The rides that this guy designs are strangely terrifying in a really unique way. I think the most memorable one is this ball swing ride that has the riders upside down. And yeah, it's just, it's uncomfortable to look at. The look of these things is just so wrong and unsafe feeling. I'll admit, when I first saw this, I thought these rides might have actually been real. And if you look at the comments, you'll see many, many people who also thought that. There was also a channel who actually took clips of the rides from the original video and uploaded them individually as their own little short videos, which made them feel much more real since in the descriptions it never stated that this was a fake thing, it was just like footage of this crazy ride. For me, these fake rides are still strangely disturbing to this day, and I don't know, it's just unnerving. It's a similar feeling to Liminal Space, which if you want to learn more about, I highly suggest you check out my video with Shooky on the topic. It's, uh, it's really good and really underrated. Little Shop of Horrors Little Shop of Horrors is a musical about a giant killer alien plant that comes to Earth and suckers a guy into feeding it blood. Little Shop of Horrors is a parody of your average B-movie, because it originally was exactly that, with a super cheesy plot and special effects. Later, in 1986, a movie featuring Rick Moranis was released, and it's amazing. This is the version of Little Shop of Horrors that most people know, and it's by far the best. It's an adaptation of the Broadway musical, and the special effects are out of this world, which actually scared a lot of younger kids who saw it. In the movie, people get eaten alive, die from too much laughing gas, get chopped up, and at the end of it all, in the director's cut, the plants take over the world and the main characters get killed. If you haven't seen it, then I highly suggest you do. I'm not too big of a musical fan, but I love Little Shop of Horrors. Mullet Mike. This entry is referring to an old YouTube channel run by a guy named Mike who, who covered creepypasta content related to video games. He had a series by the name of Creepy Gaming, which focused on, well, creepy gaming. The series covered a lot of things that were already in this iceberg and I personally loved them as a kid. They freaked me out, but Mike was always a great host and made things easier to watch. I'm not exactly sure why, but Mike recently re-uploaded all his classic videos, so if you want to go revisit your childhood, I recommend checking them out. Theme Park Gone Wrong Videos This entry is referring to a bunch of old YouTube videos displaying roller coasters and other theme park rides malfunctioning, showing people actually falling out of the rides. When I was a kid, I had a bit of a morbid fascination with these videos, since I was a big fan of theme parks and they were scary in a way that not many other things were. I'm wondering how many other people experienced this, since the only other time I've heard anyone talking about this was in the comment recommending this. So, if you guys were scared by these back in the day, let me know. These clickbait videos are still being made to this day, so it could be in a Gen Alpha iceberg in the future. Revenge of the Mushroom Kingdom Back in the day, Mario's sprite animations were all the rage, and 
people love them. Often being made by teens and young adults, these videos sometimes had a dark twist, and this was one of them. In this video series, Mario dies and the Mushroom Kingdom basically falls apart. A bunch of violent stuff happens, there's blood. Yeah. Bowling alley animations. Alright, so this is one that's super nostalgic to me and probably lots of you guys. Around the 90s and early 2000s, many bowling alleys implemented these cute little animations corresponding to things that would happen in your bowling match. For example, if you were to get a strike, it would show that on an animation on screen. Same thing with a spare, gutter ball, whatever. Sometimes these animations were kind of violent, showing living pins get killed, essentially. Sometimes the humans were... Yeah. They, they, uh, they haven't really aged too well. Honestly, I really love these animations, but I do see how some young kids could be freaked out by them. Liquid Slam. Alright, so Liquid Slam is a fictional pouch drink from the video Every 90s Commercial Ever, from the channel Rocket Jump. The video parodies cheesy 90s commercials for Capri Sun drinks, but it takes a really dark turn when the kids turn into this terrifying creature and start killing people. The video is awesome and totally captures the feel of a 90s commercial, you know, minus the killer mutant kids, but the video is genuinely pretty scary. I, and I remember it terrifying me when I was younger. I was fascinated with classic commercials from the 80s and 90s, and so I thought this video would be a compilation of a bunch of 90s commercials, but then I saw this scary video and I didn't like it. Later on I rewatched it and loved it, and it's a really good video, but it's scary. Garfield's Nightmare Ride. So this one's referring to a dark ride at the Kennywood theme park. The ride was formerly an old mill ride that was built in 1901 that was then replaced by this Garfield ride. The ride was incredibly weird and hated by most people. The ride featured creepy music and eerie effects, and it really looks like a fever dream. The water was murky, the effects didn't work well, and overall it was just a bizarre thing. In 2020, the park got new ownership, and the ride was removed and returned to the original old mill, and everything relating to Garfield in the park was also removed. Katie Putty. This is another one from Matt. Remember that kid's robot chicken thing? This one is a parody of the song Firework and features the titular character Katie Putty singing the song to some other puppets. It takes a very literal turn when the puppets start catching fire and burning from the flames. There are some pretty disturbing shots of the characters who've been burned alive, and I know that if I saw this shit as a kid, I would it would have made me cry. This show really was not for kids. Mr. Meaty. Mr. Meaty was a very, very strange puppet show on Nickelodeon which had a really strange and somewhat creepy art style that obviously freaked out a lot of kids, but it was the content of the show that was really memorable. Hell, the, the lyrics of the show's theme song say, quote, All of God's creatures fresh off the grill, which already sets up the grisly theme of the show, and Mr. Meaty centers around these two teenage boys who work at a greasy, sketchy fast food joint. The meat in the show is genuinely disgusting, which is probably the leading cause for vegetarianism at the time. One of the show's more infamous segments shows the main character being approached by a goth girl. Being a man of culture, the guy decides to show her around the kitchen until she slips on some greasy lard on the floor and lands her hand right straight into the deep fryer. She just keeps it there while moaning in pain. The other characters try to think of something up, and eventually this little guy, Parker, decides to play it off as if it's something that happens all the time, so he dunks his hand into the deep fryer and then proceeds to eat his burnt hand. The girl is super into this, weirdly, and starts to eat her hand as well, and then they high-five. Yeah, how the hell was this on Nickelodeon? I mean, this is just straight up disturbing. Even just researching the show for this video was kind of freaking me out, like there's something that just feels... I don't know, it's disturbing. When this show was airing, I was a really little kid, so obviously I didn't watch it, but I remember seeing bumpers for it, and I have a very vivid memory of my cousin playing a Mr. Meaty Flash game on the Nickelodeon website on my family's old Mac Mini. My mom used to work at Nickelodeon, I remember one time she took me there to show me around and catch up with her old friends and stuff. At Nick, they had some really, like, big cardboard cutouts of the characters, which as a two-year-old really freaked me out, while also intriguing me in a weird way. Mr. Media was made in a time where Nickelodeon was trying to appeal to older kids and teens, so I'm assuming their intention with Mr. Media was for teens to tune in for the shock value and generally disturbing things in the show. But it didn't really work the way they wanted. The show didn't do too well, especially because it had some really bad and out of place airtime that didn't really fit the audience they were going for. Abandoned by Disney. Abandoned by Disney is probably one of the most famous creepypastas ever. The story is about a man who travels to a Disney resort which has been abandoned for years. He explores the place and finds a bunch of creepy things and the story has a really great way of explaining the things and making them really unnerving. Eventually, and most infamously, he stumbles across a room labeled mascots. 
He opens it and finds a photo-negative Mickey Mouse costume that stands up and asks him if he'd like to see his head come off. This Mickey costume then rips his head off and it bleeds yellow blood and the explorer flees. He, he rips his own head off, not the, not the uh, explorer's head. The story had some dark and creepy sequels too, but the original was the one known by most. What was most terrifying for me was the name. Yeah, just the name. When I was like eight, I saw the thumbnail for the video alongside the name and in my imagination ran wild. I basically created a story in my mind that was scarier than the actual story. Overall, I'm glad that people recommended this. It sure was scary. There was also a popular Five Nights at Freddy's fan game based on this. I, I never played it, but it was pretty popular. Polybius. Alright, this one is pretty personal to me. Polybius is an urban legend about a mysterious arcade game that popped up in Portland, Oregon in the early 1980s. The game was incredibly addictive to those who played it, and it would often have people forming lines just to play the game. Allegedly, some people who played it that would hear noises and see faces in their peripheral vision. Arcade owners who hosted the game claimed to have seen men in black suits coming into the arcade after hours and taking some sort of data from the machines. Eventually, a boy got a seizure from the game and it disappeared from arcades. The game is theorized to have been a government test, like MKUltra, to see the effect of video games on the brain. You're probably wondering, is any of this real? Well, unfortunately, I can't really give you a definitive answer to that. But back in the day when I was a kid, I really, really wanted this to be real, and there were some bits of evidence that were actually pretty convincing. There are a bunch of pictures online showing allegedly real arcade cabinets, which are all most likely fan-made, since the designs aren't consistent with each other. But what really gave me hope was a local arcade that claimed to have a Polybius cabinet. Here in New York, we've got a place called Barcade, which is a bar with a bunch of classic 80s and 90s games. On their Instagram, they claim to have found a Polybius cabinet in an old Oregon storage room. This same Polybius cabinet showed up in their arcade. Being only like 9 at the time, I obviously would not be let inside the place since, well, it's a bar. But luckily, someone actually did a walkthrough of the bar and showed the cabinet for a second. A game down there called Polybus. I have no idea what the hell that is. In this video, a high scoreboard is shown. And for Polybius, the high score is just a bunch of sixes. The person who got it is also unknown. This genuinely made me think the game was real, so I actually called the bar and had a conversation with the guy on the phone. He claimed that they never had it and that the game was an urban legend, so I explained to him that they used to have a cabinet, etc. He told me that the game was probably just the fan-made ROM put into an arcade cabinet and then displayed for Halloween. Later, I found this post that they made claiming that they had to get rid of the Polybius game because it was too dangerous. Overall, this is one of the greatest urban legends out there. I love it. If you've got any information that isn't generally well known about Polybius, then please let me know in the comments. Little Miss Rarity This entry is referring to an old My Little Pony fan animation showing the pony Rarity's horn being removed. In this, the horn contains her memories, and they are seen by the pony who dissected it. She finds out that Rarity once got scratched by her cat, and realizes that she enjoyed it. So she starts to inflict pain on herself and others, all just for fun. Eventually, she accidentally kills the cat and tries to bring it back in the form of a creepy-ass doll. More messed up stuff happens, and then eventually Rarity brands herself, and then turns into a Resident Evil boss. Yeah. This video was watched by way too many kids, which is apparent through the comments of the video. And it totally makes sense that people were recommending it for this video. There are some sequels to it, there's probably some message that I'm missing, but honestly, I don't want to watch any more of these. Nine movie. This entry is referring to a movie released in September 2009 by the name of Nine. You see what, uh, what they were doing there? The film takes place in a post-apocalyptic world, completely desolate of humans. Which, on its own, is, is pretty creepy, especially considering the fact that the main character finds the corpses of humans. The film may look like your average kid's adventure movie, but no, not at all. This movie is really violent and really dark, and actually really mature in its themes. If you haven't seen the film, then I would highly suggest you do, since it's pretty good. I remember seeing the trailers of this movie back in 2009, and it intrigued me, but I knew it definitely wasn't appropriate for me. I had a feeling that lots of kids watched this movie, and thinking that it would be your average PG movie, only to get a really dark post-apocalyptic movie. Coraline. This entry is referring to a stop-motion animated movie released in 2009 that was based off of the book Coraline. The movie's animation alone is a bit unnerving since it had a really gloomy art style, but what really gets disturbing is the creatures that the main character encounters. 
There are these alternate reality versions of her parents with button eyes that try to get her to remove her eyes and replace them with buttons. Obviously they're evil and turn into scary looking monsters. There are many more creepy things in this movie, which I won't spoil, since I think a lot of the people watching this video would probably like the movie, and if they haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it for them. But this is a kind of similar thing to Nine. Lots of kids watched it expecting it not to be Nightmare Fuel and then got this movie. I remember being pretty freaked out by it when I first saw it and I can totally relate to this one. River Twigs Bed. This entry is referring to an area of the game Super Paper Mario. You're swimming through a river, and once you get to the bottom, these hands start to attack you, and this song starts playing. Yeah, that's a song from every single Iceberg YouTube video ever made. These hand things are obviously really unnerving, but then again, the whole game was, as I said earlier. What makes it even creepier is that you can hear a distorted, low-pitched voice saying, Save us. I'm just gonna leave you with that one. The Max Hedrum Incident. On November 22nd, 1987, Chicago television station got hijacked by a man in a Max Hedrum costume. Max Hedrum being an old TV character who was essentially the first computer-generated TV host. This is the 80s, so of course it was just a guy in makeup, but still, it was, it was pretty cool. In the hijack, the background actually moves like it would in the actual Max Hedrum show. The person dressed up as Max talks to the camera and makes some pop culture references, and it cuts to him being spanked. With a, with a fly swatter. The culprits were never caught, but there are some suspicions that the person who played Max was the creator of Say Shane John, which was in the original Iceberg series. A YouTuber by the name of Wang has a great video on the subject. You might be wondering, how is this Gen Z? This is from the 80s. Well, back in the day, this broadcast was spread all over the creepypasta fandom, so it reached a lot of kids and scared them. I remember being pretty freaked out by this, and I'm sure many of you guys can relate. Indie melting scene. This entry is referring to the iconic scene in Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the Nazi guy opens the Ark of the Covenant and him and all the troops around him are killed by the spirits inside. The main soldiers get a hole blown through them, but what is most disturbing is when these guys' faces melt off. Need I say more? Reese's Baby. Uh, this is a weird one. Alright, so back in the day there was an incredibly bizarre commercial of a woman giving birth to a giant Reese's Pieces candy with a face. When they cut the umbilical cord to this thing, it just spills out a bunch of candies, and the thing has a weird-ass crying baby face. The joke of the commercial is that the father was expecting it to be a Skittles candy, but it's actually peanut butter, so the real father comes in and is all sketchy and stuff, like the wife cheated on him with the peanut butter guy. I don't know, it's, it's really weird, and I've got no idea why it exists, but I do remember seeing it as a kid and it solidly disturbed me. I don't know exactly what it is specifically, but this thing is just wrong. Spongebob Saw This entry is referring to an old video series on YouTube parodying the Saw movie franchise, but with Spongebob and Patrick. The videos were super low quality and done in Microsoft Paint, and the videos are just so old YouTube, it's great. But obviously this series is really disturbing to a lot of kids since it featured Spongebob and Patrick in Saw. What's awesome is that the creator of these videos is actually still making these videos to this day. He's got a remake of the original Saw series, but with far better illustrations, but still in Microsoft Paint. He's also got a Resident Evil Spongebob parody, and even Spongebob in Among Us. The channel is called Panchito Matrix, so if you want to relive some scary old memories, go check it out. Can Your Pet Can Your Pet was an old Flash game where you would name a cute little chick and play with it. You get to dress it, wash it, feed it, play with it. You unlock all these things as you go. Eventually, you unlock what looks like a bicycle. Once you select it, the floor caves in and the bicycle turns upside down and shreds the little chick into meat. The meat falls as the credits play. Eventually, it all ends up in a can with the name of your pet on it. And then the title screen shows, Can Your Pet. Yeah, it's, uh, it's soul crushing. I know. I first learned about this from the Kids React video on it, and I had no idea what I was getting into. This was really disturbing, especially being a meat eater at the time. The game heavily resembles those old PETA Flash games which actually make an appearance on here later. Hell Valley Sky Trees In the Wii game Super Mario Galaxy 2, there was a level called Shiverburn Galaxy. This level was a mix of lava and ice, and seemingly took place in a giant crater or a volcano of sorts. Nothing inherently spooky, but if you look up using the first person mode, you will see these figures. They follow you through the entire level and are always just watching. People dug through the files and found that these characters were named the Hell Valley Sky Tree. If you think about it, these characters were massive. If they are this big from that far away, then these creatures are huge. 
Oddly enough, these aren't the only creepy creatures in Super Mario. In Super Mario 3D Land, at the end of one of the ghost house levels, this creepy figure shows up if you wait long enough. In Super Paper Mario, River Twig's bed, and in Mimi, alongside this creepy lighting glitch in Luigi's mansion. When I was a kid, I was kind of fascinated with the Hell Valley Sky Tree, and I really wanted to know more about them. Mullet Mike, who was mentioned earlier, had a great video series talking about them, which further fueled my interest in them. I'm gonna look for an old drawing that I made when I was like 8 or 9 with the Hell Valley Sky Tree in them. It's pretty cool, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to find it. Update! Here it is! Hypno's Lullaby. Hypno was a Pokemon who had a really strange aura to him. It could hypnotize people, and its Pokedex entry reads, It carries a pendulum-like device. There was once an incident where it took a child away that it hypnotized. This Pokedex entry inspired a creepypasta and this song. Come little children, come with me. Safe and happy you will be. Away from home, now let us run. With Hypno you'll have so much fun. Oh. The song was so incredibly disturbing to me and tons of other kids. And I remember not being able to finish listening to the song because of how much it freaked me out. And I really never want to encounter the Pokemon in game. Say Saint John. Shay St. John is a YouTube channel that is, well, weird. At the time, I and many others found these videos very creepy and uncanny, but nowadays they are strangely funny. They're still very uncanny and creepy, but somehow have a weird kind of shitpost aura to them. The story behind the person who made the channel is pretty interesting, and unfortunately they passed away. Scare Theater has a good video on it, which you should watch if you are interested to learn more. James Cody's Splatter. This is a weird, low-budget parody of the Looney Tunes, where all the characters are being killed and there is blood. Nowadays, it's kind of funny how low-budget it looks, I can imagine this scaring the hell out of kids. Michael Jackson Ghost Footage. I assume this is referring to this Syriac video. It's pretty funny, but I can see being scared by it as a kid. Woody's Nightmare. Woody's Nightmare could be referring to two things. Either the classic, I don't want to play with you anymore, dream, or a deleted scene from Toy Story, named Woody's Nightmare, which was only storyboarded and never animated, but it was on some special feature DVDs. The deleted scene was totally creepy and freaked me out as a kid. Final Destination Deaths. Final Destination is a film series all about killing off characters in crazy ways. Many kids saw scenes from these movies and became terrified of roller coasters, flying, elevators, etc. King Boo. King Boo is from the Super Mario Brothers games, and he is the main bad guy in Luigi's Mansion. His design isn't outright scary, but he does have a menacing aura about him. I can see how King Boo could have scared kids back in the days. Most Brutal Metal Scream. This video is a clip from the music video of the song Dig by the band Mud Vein. Instead of screaming like you would expect the clown-faced man to, instead the audio is replaced by a low-effort, quiet, uh, noise. The punchline itself isn't scary, but the music video itself is pretty uncomfortable to look at, and I know that it creeps me out as a kid. Eerie Nickelodeon ads. I think this is referring to those weird and creepy Nickelodeon bumpers. It might also be referring to weird commercials that aired on Nickelodeon. I'm not completely sure. Sims 2, I ate my baby for dinner. Oh god, I remember this video. The title implies what the video was about. In The Sims 2, you could eat your baby. Yeah. Someone made a video with text portraying a story about this woman eating her baby. Weird stuff, definitely disturbed me as a kid. Ghost Girl, just check this out. Yeah, it's still pretty creepy to this day. Lavender Town. The Lavender Town Syndrome is a classic urban legend about the original Japanese Pokemon Red and Blue games. The story goes that the Pokemon Cemetery area Lavender Town had a soundtrack that used high frequency beats which messed with the minds of many young Japanese kids. 
leading to intense headaches and suicidal thoughts. This story is one of the biggest online urban legends out there, and with many people believing in it. When I was a kid, I was infatuated with this legend, trying to figure out whether or not it was true. Being a kid, I thought that since I was in the age range of the kids in the story, that I could decipher the mystery of the song. Obviously, it sounds the same to me as it did in 2013. Still a legendary story that 100% deserves a spot on the iceberg. Rainbow Factory is a classic My Little Pony creepypasta and music video about the in-show Rainbow Factory using the blood of ponies to create rainbows. This was huge in the brony community among the teens and adults, but the kids weren't as thrilled about it. Rasputin's Death I'm pretty sure this is referring to the animated film Anastasia. The antagonist Rasputin has a very brutal death scene in which would totally scare any kid unfortunate enough to see it. Tree Trunk's Death This is referring to a scene from Adventure Time where a little elephant creature takes a bite of a glass fruit and proceeds to explode. Lots of comments on uploads of the scene talk about how it made them cry as kids. I can see why. Finn's Guardian Angel Finn's Guardian Angel is this creepy-ass character from Adventure Time. At first, it's nice and comforting, but then morphs into a crazy-looking zombie face and proceeds to try and cook Finn. Pretty creepy. GTA San Andreas Bigfoot plus UFO video. This is a classic and iconic YouTube video showing footage of Bigfoot in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. After some footage of Bigfoot is shown, later it shows a giant glowing orb in the sky. This video is super nostalgic to lots of people, and it's a legendary video on the internet. OMG, Amazing Dancer! This entry is referring to a classic Screamer video showing footage of a little girl dancing while calm piano music plays. Eventually, the scary figure appears, screaming very loudly, and yeah, it's pretty scary. Cute Things Exploding Cute Things Exploding was a YouTube channel who would make videos of cute things exploding in gory ways. I know that if I saw this as a kid, it would have really bothered me. Makes sense it's on the iceberg. Billy Reverses History I can't find something on this. It might be referring to the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy, but I'm not sure. Close to the bottom of the iceberg. Zim and Dib become baloney. This entry is referring to an episode of Invader Zim, where Zim and Dib become baloney meat. Uh, that's about it. Bill Cipher. Bill Cipher was the main villain of the cartoon show Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls itself was pretty dark in terms of stuff airing on Disney XD, but Bill Cipher himself was definitely one of the creepiest things. He would constantly transform into scary forms and faces. He is now one of the most iconic cartoon villains of all time. Burger and Fries the Cat. This is a video of a cat in a cage screaming at the person recording. The cat's scream is strangely human and eventually the cat strikes at the person. Magician Decapitates Wife. This entry is referring to an old shock video portraying a magician accidentally cutting the head of his wife off. The general consensus about the video is that it's fake, but it's really realistic. Seeing this video as a kid would be terrible. The Exploding Tiger Trick This is a PSA about keeping tigers alive in India. They really get the message across by putting a tiger in a box and proceeding to stab swords into the box. The box then opens up, full of blood, and the message, Tell the Indian government you don't want the tiger to disappear. Rake Sightings The rake is a classic creepypasta creature. This entry is most likely referring to these pictures on screen now. This creature would hide in the woods and kill people it came into contact with. Back in the day, this story was huge and scared me and many other kids. Cupcakes. Cupcakes was a My Little Pony creepypasta about how Pinkie Pie makes her iconic cupcakes by killing ponies. Earlier in the iceberg, I mentioned Mr. Davies' MLP animations. This was one of them. Like his other animations, this is brutal and disturbing. When I was a kid, the story itself terrified me and kept me up at night. And I imagine it did the same to many, many others. Gory Super Mario Logan videos. I'm assuming this refers to episodes of Super Mario Logan that had a dark twist. But I'm not going to watch Super Mario Logan to find clip because I'm not a small, annoying child. 
Suicide Mouse. Suicide Mouse.avi was a creepy pasta about a lost episode of Mickey Mouse. This uh, entry was in the iceberg earlier. I think the writer of it might have just uh, made a mistake and put it in twice. Username 666. This is another iconic creepy video slash creepy pasta on the internet. The video is made by Nana825763 and features the user entering www.youtube.com slash 666 and repeatedly refreshing the page. It slowly turns into a creepy hell world with a cursed channel and blood, gore, and just generally scary stuff. Turns out 666 was actually a YouTube channel at some point, but the account was deleted, which just adds to the video's creepiness. A creepypasta was written to capitalize off the fame of the original video, and of course, a creepypasta blew up as well. Samurai Jack Haunted House. Pretty self-explanatory. Jack goes into a haunted house, and creepy things happen. Happy Tree Friends. This was an animated web series that looked like a cute, innocent kid show. The colorful, friendly art style led many kids to click on the videos. Unfortunately, this show was not how it seemed. The show was incredibly bloody and violent. Me and many other kids were unfortunate enough to watch these videos and were promptly disturbed. Luna Game. Luna Game was a creepy flash game that showed up on Equestria Daily, a My Little Pony forum. The game featured you playing as the titular character Luna, aka Nightmare Moon. The game itself isn't all that advanced, but it's what it does to your computer that makes things scary. The game will eventually spook you with a jump scare of a creepy pony and install some screenshots of the game onto your computer. Yeah, this is disturbing. SpongeBob Face Freeze. This was an infamous episode of SpongeBob SquarePants in which SpongeBob and Patrick make these overly detailed, grotesque faces. Mr. Krabs warns them that if they continue to make those faces, they will freeze that way. SpongeBob and Patrick ignore this and continue to make said faces. Eventually, they all freeze that way, leading to this creepy scene. <laughs> I remember seeing screenshots from this episode and Spongebob pictures that always seem to freak me out. The Dawn is Your Enemy The Dawn is Your Enemy is a creepy bumper that would play late at night in Adult Swim. This bumper is incredibly creepy and I can't imagine how terrifying it would be to be a kid who wasn't supposed to be watching Adult Swim seeing this late at night with all the lights off. Scary stuff. Cell absorbs. Cell is a character in the anime slash manga Dragon Ball. He absorbs people in a creepy way that some people find hot, I think. It seems like it's a weird fetish art genre where people draw characters being absorbed by this character. Yeah, I, I, I don't get it. Leela's Coma. This entry is referring to an episode of Futurama where Leela gets stung by a bee and gets sent into a coma. While in said coma, creepy and disturbing things happen. I'm not Patrick. I'm just gonna play the video. Patrick! What are you doing here? I'm not Patrick. <laughs> yeah. I'm not Tommy slash Stu. Again, I'm just gonna play the video. I didn't know you were coming over. I'm not <laughs> 31 Flavors. This entry is probably referring to the song by Sacred Reich, which has a creepy album cover, and the song also features some screaming and cursing. I'm not really sure why it's this far down on the iceberg. Leatherface. Leatherface is the bad guy from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. He's pretty scary. Not much else. There is nothing. There is nothing is a classic creepy YouTube video featuring a woman sitting at a table with a spoon with fire in the background. She speaks in reverse and then her face falls into the bowl. And then the video plays itself again in reverse. Turns out what the woman is saying is there is nothing. I could not watch this full video as a kid. I found it incredibly disturbing. Demonic Baby. This entry is probably referring to the devil baby prank where a woman would walk around with a stroller and an evil baby animatronic would pop out and scare people walking by.
The Ring and The Grudge. These two movies are about people watching haunted tapes and then being killed later by demons who possess the tapes. These movies are often compared and are both very creepy. Val Val Val. I can't even explain this video. I, just watch it for yourself, it's really creepy and unsettling. Dark animation memes. This entry is likely referring to animation memes, which are basically a trend where you loop a simple animation to the rhythm of a song. There are many of these with gore or dealing with dark topics such as depression, uh, gore, murder, etc. Evil Dead 2 Laughing Scene This entry is referring to a scene in Evil Dead 2 where the character Ash starts to go crazy and sees everything in the room laughing. Most scarily, a deer head starts laughing. Deep Water Set Yourself Free PSA This entry is referring to a bizarre PSA about skipping school. The PSA presents itself as your average poppy teen soda commercial featuring a bunch of Disney Channel teenagers skipping school and sneaking into a closed beach. They are living the teenage dream until this girl runs off and... Yeah. The other teens start running away and also get blown up. We then see what exactly it was that they snuck into. A bomb testing site. A sign is shown displaying that. I'm not exactly sure where this aired, but regardless, this is a really disturbing PSA, especially considering how long it sets you up for it to be normal. Uh, so I guess, don't skip school if you don't want to get blown up. Don't feed the zombies, Newgrounds. This was an old video on Newgrounds showing zombies violently tearing apart a bunch of people, while that old Num 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 song that would play all over Roblox in like 2014 plays. Only, the song is distorted. The video is really violent, and the gore is really well done. I personally love the video because I love all things zombies. You know, Shaun of the Dead, Walking Dead, House of the Dead, Zombieland, all that stuff. It's great. But obviously, this would be really terrifying if it was watched by a kid, for extremely obvious reasons. Boogie Maths. This entry is referring to an old YouTube video where these cute little characters are doing math problems. The teacher writes one down, and the kid dances to it. Eventually, the problem gets really, really advanced, and then this happens. Republic Commando Ship. So, the game Star Wars Republic Commando is definitely a dark one. The game is violent, mature, and generally pretty different tonally from most Star Wars games. There's this one part of the game where you and your squad all individually explore a Republic gunship. You find some clone troopers who are unfortunately all killed in front of you, as all you can do is watch helplessly. Eventually, you find the space parts that took over the ship and they are extremely aggressive and rush you with daggers and shotguns. Later, you'll find your squad mate Sev being tortured by these pirates. You find bodies of clones all over the place and honestly, it's more sad than anything. Eventually, you end up in a dark room where you get a distress signal from a squad of surviving clones. Once you turn on your night vision, you'll see that all these clones are dead. The game was really something special and I encourage you guys all to play it. It recently released on the Switch and PlayStation 4, and it's pretty cheap, so if you like Star Wars or just great games in general, that you should absolutely play this. Jekyll and Hyde Club The Jekyll and Hyde Club is a franchise of spooky-themed restaurants filled with animatronics and actors. Some of the animatronics are pretty damn scary, and they often were controlled and voiced by people in another room, so they could address you directly, basically. Think Leonard Beerstein from Chris Chan lore. The restaurant- <laughs> That's funny, I forgot I put that in. The restaurant first opened in 1987 in the West Village in New York, and it was great. Actors would roam the restaurant and interact with patrons. At some point in the 90s, another way bigger location opened near Central Park, and this one was intense. It had this clown guy, a skeleton band, and a live animatronic show, and it was really cool. In 2012, this place closed down, and later in the year, they opened a location in Times Square, which was really extravagant. I personally went there when I was 9, and I got so freaked out because of all the animatronics, and the overall atmosphere, though, when this little old lady, who, keep in mind, was just a normal, real old lady, approached me, explaining that she didn't understand modern technology, I was playing on my 3DS, she freaked me out so bad that I jumped and recoiled backwards. It was hilarious. 
Unfortunately, in 2015, this restaurant closed down permanently, and now the only surviving location is the original West Village location. Unfortunately, the place is kind of falling apart, but it's still a ton of fun, and it's still freaking out kids to this day. I have a feeling it's not going to last too much longer, so if you're in New York, I'd highly recommend that you go check the place out. PETA Flash Games The People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals is an incredibly controversial organization. Alone, the idea is a good one, but they kind of suck. Like, real bad. In the 2000s and 2010s, they created a bunch of Flash games parodying a bunch of popular video games that were for children, like Mario, Pokemon, Cooking Mama, etc. These games were really bloody and disturbing, especially in the case of the Cooking Mama one. And since these games were of kid-friendly IPs, lots of kids either played the games or at least watched videos of them being played on YouTube. And they were promptly disturbed. I was one of those kids, and I personally actually played the Super Chick Sisters game a few times, and I liked it. But I was also disturbed by the portrayal of KFC and Ronald McDonald. At the end of one of the Chick Sisters games, you'd be presented with a bonus video taken secretly, showing the awful cruelty of the chicken coops and all of the torture that the chickens go through before they are killed. It's some really, really, really disturbing stuff on its own right. One of PETA's stupider games was Mario Kills Tanuki, which was a uh, protest uh, to the return of the Tanuki suit in the game Super Mario 3D Land. They were basically saying that Mario skins Tanukis and wears their suit, which is fucking stupid. They also made a parody by the name of Pokemon Black and Blue, which compared Pokemon to circus animals in the way that they are poorly treated. Kind of a stretch. Overall, I'm glad that they stopped doing these since they are really unnecessary in my opinion. And uh, PETA sucks. A Hennabarbus Hennacide. This entry is referring to an iconic creepy face and the Facebook page around it. Allegedly, this account would send disturbing pictures alongside coordinates to random children. Some people claim to have visited the Facebook page seeing extremely graphic and illegal content on it, which was deleted slightly after they visited. Eventually, some more disturbing things appeared on the page and it was deleted. Apparently, the face itself is from a Japanese website by the name of 2chan. People on the website have an inside joke where they try to make the character less scary, which, uh, good luck with that. Japanese Sea Creature The sentry is referring to a very strange video on YouTube that claimed to show a strange, unknown sea creature being messed with by a group of boys. The guys start flipping it over and start poking and prodding at it, and eventually they pour coke on it. The creature then starts to vomit or something, and then it explodes and gets all over the guys as they scream. The design of the creature looks so real. The way it moves, it just looks so alive. To be clear, the creature is fake and comes from a TV show, but it's still very impressive. The original video on YouTube didn't state that it was fictional, leading to many people believing it was real. Me, me, me. Me, me, me is a really well done, crazy YouTube video about porn addiction. The video is animated in the Japanese anime art style, and I'm only going to show you parts of it. Um, if you've seen the video, you know exactly why. There's a pretty tragic story to the whole thing, which if it's your first time watching, you won't get because the boobies are all over the place, and uh, that's very distracting. But Basically, throughout the whole video, this guy, the protagonist, is basically being hypnotized by the big booby anime girls. However, those big booby anime girls are representative of his addiction, so they are evil monster-like creatures. Eventually, the guy's girlfriend is found, crying, and the guy tries to help her but can't, and is seen being eaten by a naked anime girl. Eventually, the guy goes through a Sailor Moon transformation into this badass super soldier, and the video turns into a first-person perspective as he blasts apart the anime girls. Unfortunately, he gets ambushed by an army of anime girls with the same type of weaponry as the fembots in Austin Powers, if you know what I'm talking about. He is then torn apart and eaten by these characters, and it ends with him dead. And that's where the video starts. Yeah, the thing goes forever. It loops. The guy never overcomes his addiction, and his girlfriend just has to go through the same pain over and over and over again. This is one of those videos that was recommended to many, many kids and freaked them out. The video has a pretty deep message to it, and, uh, well, that's lost on uh, most people who watch it, at least for the first time. Evil Chipmunks. This entry is referring to a scene in the movie Disaster Movie, where the main characters find these really realistic looking portrayals of the CGI Alvin and the Chipmunk characters. The chipmunks are friendly and just singing Christmas songs at first, and the characters enjoy it. However, 
The chipmunks start singing death metal and eventually they are revealed to have rabies. They attack all the people. Eventually, the pregnant woman gets eaten alive by the chipmunks and it's pretty disturbing. I remember seeing the clip back in 2015 and at the time, me and my friends loved watching the original Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. And I had personally watched that movie since I was like four, so I was very fond of it. Seeing this definitely disturbed me and lots of other kids for obvious reasons. Watching it now, it's kind of hilarious in a way, and it's very unexpected, especially without context of the rest of the movie, so I totally understand why you guys recommended it. Body falling from the ceiling picture. Alright, so I have a feeling that most of you guys will recognize this picture. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty terrifying. Turns out the picture is fake, but uh, still, it's, it's scary. The Squawking Dead. The Squawking Dead is an old Angry Birds parody animation of The Walking Dead, where there's a group of birds defending themselves against a horde of zombie pigs. Unfortunately, most of the birds get brutally killed off by these zombie pigs, and I mean brutally killed. Like, this is some violent shit. Eventually, the King Pig breaks in and starts eating the Bomb Bird. Being the Bomb Bird, he blows up, saving the last remaining birds. The Red Bird then starts to lose feathers and he turns into a zombie. The video is probably watched by kids thinking it was just another one of many other kid-friendly uh, Angry Birds animations and were probably scared out of their minds by this violent romp. I feel bad for any kids who watched this since I was one of those kids who just watched a ton of Angry Birds videos. Beeble Fox. Uh, this is a weird one. Beeble Fox was a weird YouTube channel about a weird man. The first video on his channel is a review of Grand Theft Auto. You can see a part of his room is filled up with pictures of this young looking girl. This guy has the creepiest voice. Like, the creepiest voice, and it fits perfectly with the videos. Why, why, why are you hurting me? No, no, I'm doing society a favor. No, this is the right thing to do. He's got another video called Unboxing My New Daughter, and in it, he, well, unboxes this weird mannequin, and I hate this, and I don't want to keep doing this entry, but I, I gotta continue. This is the fully explained series after all, so I gotta carry on. His most popular video is one of him creepily taking apart another mannequin doll and wearing its limbs, and he's a furry, and yeah, no, no, f*** this. I, I, I remember seeing the Scare Theater video on this, and uh, it was kind of creepy to me at the time, but now I, I really can't stand it. I feel like this guy is your average Discord mod, creeping on kids, and it's just, it's just not good. Cell phone microwave. The century is referring to a very creepy old YouTube video showing a Nokia cell phone being microwaved. It's pretty normal until it starts bubbling and this crazy looking monster face comes out of the phone and starts screaming. It's some really cool stuff and it was pretty disturbing back in the day. Of course, many kids thought this would actually happen when microwaving a phone, so that's why it's here. I personally think this video is really cool and might even be a good plot for to a horror movie or something. Syriac Meow The century is referring to a video by the YouTuber Syriac who was a part of the original childhood trauma iceberg. This animation has a really cute and friendly art style, but the contents of it are the exact opposite. The video starts with zombie cats rising from their graves, marching over to a city to the beat of music. The zombies attack the living and it's very gory and brutal, in a very stark contrast to the cute visuals. Eventually, the military arrives and starts to take down some zombies. But unfortunately, the poor soldiers are also killed and every dead cat comes back as a zombie. Every time one dies, their souls release up into the sky, and eventually, the remaining survivors see that the zombies are too powerful, so they decide to just quickly end it themselves, instead of going through the pain of being ripped apart by a zombie. This animation is really morbid and dark, so obviously, this was genuinely terrifying to a lot of kids. They probably just saw the cute zombie cats on the thumbnail and clicked it for that. I guess the moral of the story is to keep kids away from Syriac. Creepy Vocaloid Songs Alright, so Vocaloid is a Japanese software that you can use to essentially make virtual singers sing whatever you want them to sing. It's a pretty cool thing, and there are a whole bunch of characters, most famously Hatsune Miku, who you probably recognize if you've ever been on the internet. Since anyone can make a Vocaloid song, there are a lot of creepy and disturbing ones that kids found. Songs like Fear Garden, about murder. Dark Woods, about a creepy haunted circus in the middle of the woods. In Rainy Town, balloons dance with demons about sexual assault, and Many, many other Vocaloid songs dabble in very dark subject matter. Vocaloid is generally somewhat kid-friendly, so I imagine lots of young Vocaloid fans went down a creepy Vocaloid rabbit hole. I personally was kinda into Vocaloid back in the day, playing the old 3DS game, but not much more than that, so I luckily didn't run into any of these songs. Wiggles Puppets The Wiggles is a classic kids TV show group of a bunch of guys singing kid-friendly songs with some puppets and stuff. 
In the show, there was this segment featuring puppet versions of the band members singing behind a psychedelic background. Alone, this segment is pretty weird and unnerving, but what was more scary is the edits that people made online, which is what's being shown on screen now. I remember seeing the YouTube poops of these, and they were pretty disturbing. Mars 2112 Mars 2112 is a themed restaurant in Times Square. The idea was that you were in a Martian cave, so it all took place underground. To get into this restaurant, you took a spaceship ride down to the restaurant, which was a repurposed military flight simulator. This ride might have been kind of scary to some kids, since the audio was loud and the visuals were very psychedelic, and you were being shaken around the whole time. Once this ride finished, you would walk through a cave where you would walk by a bar and an arcade, where you would eventually find the dining area known as the Crystal Crater. Here you would find a bunch of aliens, which... Yeah. While not intentionally creepy, a lot of these characters, especially in the restaurant's later years, became dirty and started to fall apart. There's also this thing. I have no idea what it's supposed to be. And this is the only photo of it that exists. Unfortunately, in 2012, the restaurant closed down for good and there have been no trace of these characters and set pieces since. I personally love the restaurant, but it was terrifying to some, so that's why I put it here. Talking Angela spying on you. Alright, so back in the day, there was this mobile game, I guess, by the name of Talking Tom. In this app, you would talk to your phone, and this little cat character would repeat whatever you said back to you in a high-pitched voice. The game was a hit, with multiple spin-offs and sequels. One of these was Talking Angela, which was a different version of the formula. In Talking Angela, you could actually talk to the cat through text, and it would respond with, like, a Cleverbot-style AI. You could say basically anything to it, which led to sometimes inappropriate situations, but what really started the controversy was the character's eyes. Yeah, turns out if you zoomed into the character's eyes, you could allegedly see a creepy old man who ran the app. And, uh, this creepy old man interacted with all the kids using it. There were a bunch of pictures of these supposed creeps looking through the eyes of these kid-friendly characters. Um, which, this sent parents and news media through a loop, and there was a bunch of stuff warning people not to use the app, and it was honestly pretty frightening. The idea that an innocent kids game could have such a sinister person behind it was really disturbing and frightening for most. Obviously it wasn't true, but it just doesn't really make sense if you think about it. But nowadays, that really is how companies use your data, and most people don't even know it. The age of privacy is over, and it's really scary. Hell on Kitty. Hell on Kitty is an animated parody of Hello Kitty by Twisted Grimm. He uh, also made the popsicle video from the original Iceberg series. Hell on Kitty is a very cute looking video that could be mistaken for official Hello Kitty material. The video features Hello Kitty going through her day, realizing that she does not have a mouth. Eventually, she tries to eat food and drink water but can't and starts to freak out. She sees a kitchen knife on the floor and reaches for it. The video then cuts to credits showing a bloody sandwich with a bite in it. At the end, we get a jump scare of this creepypasta looking Hello Kitty, and yeah, it's uh, it's pretty disturbing. I feel bad for any innocent kids who clicked on this video expecting to see their favorite cartoon character only to get this. Hamster Hell. Hamster Hell is an old stop motion animation video by Lee Hardcastle, who was the creator of that super disturbing Simpsons video, and many, many, many other more disturbing. Uh, animations. Hamster Hell is one of his most popular videos. It was all over YouTube recommendations back in the day. The animation is about a boy who gets a hamster and is extremely neglectful and abusive to it to say the least. Something that makes it disturbing is that the kid seemingly isn't intentionally being terrible and is really more of just him being a stupid idiot. Eventually one of the hamsters has babies and the boy grabs them, making the mother eat the babies. The kid then angrily hits the hamster with a hammer and kills it. The hamster then eats the body, which is just as bloody and disturbing as you'd imagine it to be. And the boy then angrily takes the hamster and throws it out the window. This video was recommended to way, way, way too many kids who were totally disturbed, and especially since this video doesn't start off terrifying, it really is more like a slow burning thing. 25 Ways to Kill Yoshi This video was a classic one. Seen by many kids back in the day, this video showed Yoshi being killed in 25 different ways. The video itself wasn't the worst thing in the world, but there were some pretty violent things, and I personally totally relate to this one since I was a huge fan of Yoshi back in the day, and this video was not fun to watch back then. The video is super nostalgic nowadays, which is why I'm guessing you guys suggested it, but uh, it scared a lot of kids back in the day, and there are multiple sequels, but the original is really the most iconic one. Pony.mov 
Pony.mov was an animated parody of My Little Pony created by Hot Diggity Demon, who you might know from his current show Brain Dump. To put it simply, Pony.mov is a dark and adult parody of My Little Pony. The videos had some pretty dark and disturbing imagery in them, which was obviously very unexpected to the kids who watched them. There was one video in particular that was more disturbing from the rest. This video featured the main characters going into one of the ponies' hidden rooms in their house. In this room, they find a bunch of skinned animals and gore and all that stuff. The owner of this room then proceeds to chop one of the ponies in half with a chainsaw. I also gotta mention that she sounds like Fat Albert the whole time, which I don't know if that makes it more or less disturbing, but regardless, the series scared a lot of kids and of course became a meme in the brony community, because of course it did. Hal Dead Body and Angry Birds Intro this entry is referring to an Arabic Angry Birds parody that shows the original Angry Birds opening cutscene, only with the boomerang bird Hal dead with a trail of blood leading to the pigs, who look really weird. I'm pretty sure this is a political cartoon and the rest of the video isn't really disturbing. The animation's actually really good for what it is, but the whole video is in a whole different language, but it really is just the intro alone that's stuck with tons of kids, including me. Swearing Baby Swearing Baby is a classic screamer jump scare video that features a cute baby just sitting there until this happens. The description of the video tells you to turn the volume up so you can hear the baby swearing, and I totally see why you guys recommended it. Poochie and Pansy This entry is referring to an ARG web series which portrayed itself as a kid-friendly little kid show, but it ended up being a really disturbing and scary ARG. There's a ton of creepy imagery and jump scares, and of course there's a creepy story hidden within it all. Scare Theater made a great video on it, and I suggest that you check out that video if you want to learn more. Wonder Shosen Wonder Shosen was a TV show that was mimicking a kid's show, but was the exact opposite. The show had a lot of disturbing and violent moments, and tackled really complicated topics. The show was crude, offensive, and disturbing, which was the whole point. I imagine lots of kids might have turned on to this show, thinking it was something along the lines of Sesame Street, only to see this disturbing show. Body of a Pig Body of a Pig is a video allegedly showing EVP footage of a ghost saying that it has the body of a pig. It later shows footage of this supposed ghost. Uh, the video is pretty disturbing if you don't think about it for longer than a second. But the idea of this creature being insecure about his body is really just an unfortunate one. Poor guy. Needs some self-confidence. Clone Wars Brain Invaders In the show Star Wars The Clone Wars, there is an episode where some clone troopers pick up a parasite that goes up their nose. This takes over their minds and then basically makes them act like intelligent zombies. The parasite comes out of the clone's mouth and it's pretty intense. Ahsoka Tano, a 14-year-old Padawan, has to kill some of her clone friends, which is really unfortunate. Luckily, eventually Ahsoka finds out that the parasites die when they are frozen, which saves her and her friend's asses. The Clone Wars has a ton of really mature and disturbing content in it, which obviously lots and lots of kids watch, since on the surface it is technically a kid's show. Which, uh, it isn't, by the way. The Brain Invaders are just one of many, many disturbing things in this show, but this one specifically is just straight up frightening to lots of kids. Coney Island Spookorama the Spookorama is a horror dark ride in Coney Island, New York. The ride is really old and pretty cheesy if you look at it nowadays, but as a little kid, this thing was scary. Even the outside of the ride was frightening, with loud sounds and flashing lights and jump scares galore at the Spookorama. The ride is actually still open to this day, frightening children for generations to come. Mii's Kill on Nintendo Wii Mii's Killed on Nintendo Wii is an old video depicting, well, Mii's being killed. The Mii characters are pretty off-model, and to be honest, they don't really look like Mii's, but for some reason, this was thought to be real by myself and tons of other kids back in the day. I remember being really disturbed after seeing this, and the way the guy who made the Mii's just sits there and watches hopelessly really messed with me. Turns out, Mii's Killed Nintendo Wii is actually just a reposted clip of a video that came out two years prior. The original video, titled Death of the Mii People, features a boy very happily creating Mii's. He sends these Mii's to his asshole friend who hates the Mii's, and wants to get revenge on the guy for just simply sending him some Mii's he liked. It's terrible. The boy wakes up to see his Mii's dead on the floor, and then the rest of the stolen video plays. To me, the original vid is actually the more disturbing of the two, since the killer Mii's are a deliberate thing, and the main character is just so sweet and innocent that it really makes you feel bad for him. Poppy the Performer Poppy the Performer is a Japanese CGI kids show that was more than weird. 
The show is technically a kid's show, but showed many, many disturbing things to the point where it feels more like a creepypasta more than anything. The show is pretty much just a uh, nightmare fuel, and apparently the creator wasn't even making the show for kids, he was just told to make a show, and he damn sure did. Poppy, the main character of the show, is an evil clown who literally just kills someone in every episode. He himself also dies a bunch of times, and in a bunch of gruesome ways, and yeah, I could totally see how this could be traumatic. It's just, uh, it's not a kid's show, that's all I can say. Peanut butter jelly time. No, this is not what you think it is. This entry is referring to a flash animation of the peanut butter jelly time banana pursuing a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. The banana's actions coincide with the music of the lyrics, so eventually when it's peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat, the banana beats the sandwich senselessly while jelly splats on him like blood. We then see text saying that the dancing banana was apprehended and given a life in prison, that the peanut butter jelly guy survived but lives the remainder of his days as a vegetable. This animation is pretty funny nowadays, but as a kid it was not fun to watch. Weird PlayStation and Xbox ads. This entry is referring to those weirdo early 2000s marketing campaigns that had nothing to do with video games or advertising consoles. The most iconic one of these is this creepy baby one. Dan Howell's Halloween Livestream Dan Howell is a YouTuber, mostly known as Dan from Dan and Phil. He did a Halloween Livestream where it starts off with his face covered with a picture of a printed out woman. Uh, I don't know, it's weird, I can see how this can be kind of creepy. BND Logo B&D was an old Russian television network. Their logo is... Yeah. Slenderman. Slenderman is probably one of the most iconic creepypasta characters of all time. If you don't know, this is the original picture. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. I was personally pretty creeped out by Slenderman back in the day, but one of my closest friends at the time was terrified of the guy. He would play Stop It Slender on Roblox and proceed to not sleep for the following night. Classic stuff. Mexican Doll Tree I'm pretty sure this entry is referring to the Isle of Dolls, an island in Mexico filled with dolls hanging from trees. The story goes that the man who lived on that island saw a girl's corpse come onto shore. She had a doll with her that he hung up as a memorial for the girl. Creepy paranormal things started happening on the island, so the man thought that the one doll wasn't enough. He would travel out of town in search of abandoned dolls. Nowadays, it's a bit of a tourist attraction, with many people saying it's one of the most haunted places in the world. People still bring dolls to the island and tour it frequently. Elmo Eats a Baby Elmo Eats a Baby is this crazy little animation on YouTube. Nowadays, it's not scary, but back then it was totally scary. Goosebumps Goosebumps is a classic horror book series created by R.L. Stein. The books are for kids, so it's nothing too bad, but as a kid, these books and TV shows were really creepy. The one that freaked me out the most was The Mask. Goosebumps is still a thing in the current day, with two movies featuring Jack Black, so maybe the next generation will be able to relate to being scared to this as well. Unedited footage of a bear. I'm gonna read the TV Tropes entry for this. Unedited footage of a bear is a 2014 short created by Alan Resnick and Wham City Comedy that aired as an infomercial on Adult Swim. The short is exactly what you expect it to be. Well, at first. The short does start with footage of a grizzly bear while the cameraman comments on the size of the bear's ears. However, the short is interrupted by a commercial for a fictional drug called Claridil. Donna, the main protagonist, tells the audience about how much better her life is after she started taking the medication. As the short draws on, it quickly becomes clear that something is very wrong. What results is a downward spiral into madness, anxiety, and much more. Het. Oh, I remember this one. Het is referring to a video by Vine Sauce Joel where he plays a bunch of knockoff games. He plays a Russian Felix the Cat game, and he loses his lives and sees a continue screen. He decides to press HET. This is the game over screen that proceeds. Terrible, I know. Disturbing music videos. This entry says it all. Lots of music videos are very disturbing. The Undertaker kidnaps Teddy Long. This is referring to a scene from WWE where The Undertaker tricks Teddy Long, a referee, manager, and authority figure of WWE. In this scene, The Undertaker tricks him into going into his limo. When inside, The Undertaker says, Buckle up, Teddy. The back of the car closes and then fills up with fog. Teddy struggles and screams as lightning sounds and lights play. 
Jeff the Killer. Jeff the Killer is one of the most iconic creepypasta characters of all time. The story itself is pretty bad, and, and I don't mean bad as in like bad as in oh it was scary, but bad as in poorly written. But the picture to go along with it is still pretty frightening. The image and story would keep me up at night pretty frequently. Pico School. Pico School was an old flash game on Newgrounds where you played as a boy trying to survive an attacker in school. This game is beyond messed up. Dane Bowe's Scariest Face Vid. Dane Bowe was the creator of the classic web series turned TV show Annoying Orange. He made a bunch of really cool videos back in the day showing off his special effects. Scariest Faces was a series on his channel where normal people are sitting around talking until one of them challenges to make the scariest face they can. Their faces then transform into crazy looking monster faces. These effects are done with Dane Bowe's iconic special effects at the time. I remember this creeping me out back when I was like 8 or 9. Ponce's death, Clone High. This is referring to a scene in Clone High where John F. Kennedy and Ponce de Leon are arguing and littering. Ponce is warned that everyone is littering because they look up to him. He doesn't care but proceeds to get instant karma with a bunch of garbage blowing on him, killing him. The scene is pretty graphic and I totally see this traumatizing a kid. Bad Baby Newgrounds Bad Baby was an old Newgrounds animation that was just straight twisted. I'm not going to show footage of the video since it's really violent and I don't think you, the viewer, or YouTube would appreciate it. Ed, Ed, and Eddie Lost Episode This is referring to an old lost episode about Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Like most creepypastas at the time, the story had a creepy video to go along with it. But just like the rest, it was just Photoshop screenshots with VHS effects. Jack, a story from the past. This is an old YouTube animation made by Amazing Phil about a boy with 84 arms. He was bullied and made fun of for having so many arms that he decided to jump off a mountain. All of his hands are amputated, leading him to be known as the Octopus Boy. Yeah, it's kind of sad to be honest. Smile.jpg Smile.jpg is a creepypasta about this picture. Apparently, it makes people go crazy and all that stuff. Classic creepypasta stuff. The pictures themselves are actually pretty creepy and definitely made me check behind the shower curtains a few times back in the day. Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon This was an adult-oriented reboot of the classic Nickelodeon show Ren and Stimpy. Adult Party Cartoon tried to be as disgusting and disturbing as it could be. The overall reception of the show is negative given the graphic content in it. The creator of Ren and Stimpy is a terrible person and a child predator. He was in control of this show. Seeing episodes of this among the original kid-friendly show was really disturbing. Little Baby's Ice Cream Oh, I love this one! This was an incredibly popular commercial for Little Baby's Ice Cream. It featured a man made of ice cream digging a spoon into his head and eating his delicious body. The man's head is edited to look like he's been at it for a while. He stares at the camera intently as a voiceover seriously explains how happy he is to eat his ice cream. This commercial is incredibly disturbing for a lot of people, but when I was younger, I liked it for that reason. Turns out it was actually marshmallow fluff that the guy was covered in. This is a classic. Child's Play Child's Play is the film series that Chucky is from. I remember being terrified of Chucky when I was younger. The concept of a my buddy gone evil that you can't kill really freaked me out. Ghost in Japan this is a creepy video interviewing a guy who supposedly witnessed a creepy ghost. The most infamous scene in this video is of the ghost girl getting hit by a subway. When I was little, I actually thought this was real and, well, it messed me up for a few days. Red Mist. This is a classic, and I'd be surprised if you haven't heard about it. Red Mist, otherwise known as Squidward Tadasu, so is probably one of the most famous lost episode creepypastas of all time. This story is about an intern at Nickelodeon who watches an evil episode of Spongebob where Squidward gets depressed and and they're dead kids, blah blah blah. It's not very well written, but one of the main reasons it's popular is because of this picture. Yeah, I'll admit, it is pretty creepy and looks pretty legit. In fact, the story is so big that it even had a reference in a modern episode of Spongebob. Later, this reference was unfortunately censored for obvious reasons. SCPs. 
SCPs are fictional monsters created by internet users. Some of them are friendly, while others are scary and really disturbing. The backstories are very creepypasta-like and very creepy. My personal favorite SCP is either the iPods or the Pet Rocks. The SCP stories are basically presented as entries made by people working with the SCPs, which makes the stories more realistic, therefore more creepy. Dirt Girl World This was a show intended for preschoolers. The animation is basically the same idea behind the annoying orange, but instead of static fruits, it's these animated bodies. I mean, really. What were they thinking? Amber Alerts and Weather Alerts. Oh boy, this one still freaks me out to this day. The sound of an Amber Alert is something that's both jarring and alerting, as it's meant to be. What scares me the most about it is the unknown. Before you pull out your phone and see why the alarm's going off, it really could be anything. A bombing, meteor shower, military attack, etc. Obviously it isn't that, but the alarm is just straight up scary. Gary takes a bath girl. Here, just I check this out. I am now going to assault your mind with subliminal messages. <laughs> Sorry you had to see that. Squidward's Asus. Squidward's Asus is actually kind of a knockoff of Red Mist. It's basically the same idea, but it's a different story and kind of took the fame of it. And, well, yeah, I'm not going to talk much about it because I don't think YouTube likes it so much. Steven gets covered in cats. This entry is referring to a scene in Steven Universe where Steven starts to turn into cats. His body parts transform into weird, squishy cat things, and it's just pretty weird. Obey the walrus. This video is another case of people finding it either creepy or funny or kind of neither. The video starts off with Andros from Star Fox singing the Itsy Bitsy Spider in Spanish. It then starts to speed up and play backwards, and then it shows footage of a person tap dancing. The person in the video had polio as a kid, so her body movements are very uncanny. The music in the video, alongside the footage, makes it really uncomfortable to watch for some. Some say the video is made by a cult that obeys walruses, which is, uh, not true, but it's kind of fun. Scare Theater has a really good video explaining it. Peter's head explodes. As a Peter Griffin appreciator, I was really happy to see this on the iceberg. I'm pretty sure this entry is referring to the scene where Peter takes a big bite of a fudgesicle. His head proceeds to explode. Vincent's laugh in Thriller. This is referring to Vincent Price's iconic laugh at the end of Thriller. I can see how a younger kid could be freaked out by this. Dora no more. Oh man, I tried to forget about this and you know what? I did, until I saw the entry on this iceberg. Dora No More is a creepy video made by the Stringini Bros. It showed Dora dying in a bunch of horrible, disturbing ways while the singer describes them. Honestly, it seems like the writer of this iceberg had the exact same childhood as I did. It's insane. Freak Fred. I'm pretty sure this is referring to Freaky Fred from Courage the Cowardly Dog. This character is a demented barber obsessed with cutting excessive amounts of hair. His overall voice, theme song, and appearance are incredibly creepy, and honestly, I'm really surprised at what they could put into that show. Salad Fingers Salad Fingers was a web series created by David Firth. The series was really creepy and disturbing. I'm not sure why, but lots of kids decided to watch at least the first of these videos including me. It's a really good web series if you like that kind of thing. Bobek. This is a video displaying one of those old flash animations from duty.com. A guy sits on a toilet, his head explodes, and yeah, that's what it is. Snow White in the Haunted Forest. This entry is referring to the scene in Snow White in the Seven Dwarves. Said forest looks normal, but then turns out to be scary with faces and hands and all that stuff. Definitely something that would be creepy as a kid. Blank-Eyed Girls in Adventure Time This is an episode of Adventure Time in which Finn and Jake hear a radio show talking about blank-eyed girls. Jake thinks it's BS while Finn believes it. Turns out they end up encountering one of the girls and more arrive. Creepy stuff. Deep Waters Gygus Gygus is the main antagonist of Earthbound. 
Gygus is an evil alien who, upon failing his original mission to reclaim the knowledge of PSI from humans, intends to sentence all of reality to the horror of infinite darkness. This creature straight up just has a really unnerving appearance and definitely creeped me out back in the day. Tales, uh, um... This is referring to an infamous Sonic the Hedgehog webcomic, but I, uh, I don't think I should describe it here. I don't think anyone wants to hear about it. Kraina Grisbow TV. This is a Polish YouTube ARG channel. The imagery is weird and creepy, and there's a whole story behind the weird imagery. I know I would be terrified if I happened to click on one of those videos when I was a little kid. Sharptooth. This entry is referring to the T-Rex in Land Before Time. He's scary and attacks the main characters. Seeing this movie as a little kid, in love with dinosaurs is a great source of childhood trauma. Rubber Johnny. Rubber Johnny is a weird little alien creature from a music video made by Chris Cunningham and Aphex Twin. The special effects on Johnny are actually really good, and the way he moves is just full on uncanny valley, his voice is weird, and just the whole thing is, is uncomfortable and creepy. Yume Nikki. Yume Nikki is a Japanese horror RPG. The game is really creepy and has an amazing soundtrack, which you've actually heard in part 1 and 2 of these iceberg videos. The imagery in this game is really creepy and I'm glad I never played it or watched playthroughs of it when I was younger. Creepy Tape Found in Croatia This is a YouTube video with a description stating that the footage was released by the police. The teens in the video have been missing since. It starts off with kids just messing around until they see a man standing in the dark. They then approach and encounter the man. He's hunched over and has a creepy mask on. He then starts to approach the boys and they run away. The creepy man finds the boys again so they run. The boys decide to go to what looks like their school. They open the elevator and see the creepy man inside. It immediately cuts off. I personally think this video is fake and reminds me a lot of that old Polybius found video. It's still very creepy. The Sneeze, How Germs Are Spread This is an old CGI educational video showing how germs are spread. Nowadays, the outdated animation is oddly nostalgic, but I can see being scared of this as a kid. You know, seeing how easy it is for germs to spread and all that. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is an iconic horror book series for kids. The illustrations are to this day very scary. I never read any of the stories since the imagery of that clown made me want to stay as far away as possible from them. I've heard that the stories aren't necessarily the scariest nowadays, but are still remembered as terrifying. Wonka's Boat Ride This is referring to that classic scene from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. After Augustus Glue falls into the chocolate river, Willy Wonka pulls up a big pink boat made of candy. It proceeds to go into a dark tunnel. Willy Wonka creepily recites a dark poem while scary imagery is shown on the walls of the tunnel. Most notably, a chicken's head getting cut off. This scene is just a whole mix of scary stuff and honestly, it's a little bit baffling as to how it got into this movie. Pencil Face Pencil Face is referring to a short film made by Scad Shorts. It features a little girl finding a giant magic pencil with a creepy face. She draws multiple things that become real, kind of like that Spongebob episode. Eventually, she draws a spiral which creates a black hole thing. The pencil continues to have that creepy smile on its face when she is sucked into it. Tiny the T-Rex This entry is referring to a scene in the Disney movie Meet the Robinsons where the villain goes back in time to steal a T-Rex. The T-Rex almost eats the main character and proceeds to get pizza dough shot at it. I think this is on the list because it's just generally a scary scene for little kids. Mr. Crab's Bloodlust This entry is referring to an old YouTube poop portraying Mr. Crab's intentionally killing the health inspector from that one episode with the nasty patty. Creepy imagery is shown, he goes to jail, kills the guards and proceeds to kill Squidward. He then tries to kill Spongebob, but Spongebob uses a bomb to take them both out. It's kind of funny nowadays, but I can totally see being scared by it as a kid. Dairy Queen Monster Ad. Check this out.
It's kind of awesome, right? The effects are really good for what they are, and it's pretty cool. Honestly, it's pretty creepy, but I personally like it. Although I could totally see it being really scary as a kid. NX underscore VCJZMQ9W. Apparently this video is from the Adventure Time episode, A Glitch is a Glitch. And honestly, it made me pretty uncomfortable. Imagine being just an innocent kid watching Adventure Time and then you see this. Happy Meal. This is referring to an old video featuring a man in a suit being chased by an evil monster version of Ronald McDonald. He gets attacked and tries to shoot the evil clown. Bullets do nothing and he gets eaten. The video is watched by many, many unsuspecting kids, and the video was recommended a lot when I was watching videos of McDonald's toy reviews. I remember seeing the thumbnail and being scared to misclick on the video. Scrooge Puppets from Polar Express. This is referring to that scene in the Polar Express where those kids went into a room full of puppets. A creepy Scrooge puppet starts being operated by some weird man on the top of the train. I remember the scene always made me uncomfortable when I was younger. Billy the Puppet. I'm pretty sure this is referring to Billy Jigsaw from the Saw movies. Saw movies are totally scary and the puppet who causes all the torture is also very scary. Kuyang Duyan. This is referring to an old YouTube video. Uh, yeah. Apparently it's showing an Indonesian legend known as a Kuyang. The video is really uncomfortable to watch. Luckily this is actually just footage of an Indonesian fortune teller who has quote-unquote, the body of a fox. The low quality of the video just makes it somewhat believable. Spooky Buddies. This is referring to the movie Spooky Buddies, which is part of the Air Buddies series. I'm assuming there was some spooky Halloween stuff in this film that scared kids when they were younger. You're not perfect. This is referring to this incredible scene from Courage the Cowardly Dog. It shows this weird CGI trumpet fetus thing that whispers, You're not perfect. Yeah, uh, pretty creepy. WP Kep KW. WP Kep KW is a mysterious YouTube video showing a blurred out deformed looking face with creepy music in the background. Apparently, this video is cursed or something. There's a lot of debate as to who the blurred out person is. Some people think it's Rick Astley, others think it's Hitler, and some people think it's Michael Rosen. Either way, it's pretty creepy. Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 might not seem creepy, but some people who've already played the game feel a sense of dread and loneliness from it. Mario is kind of the only friendly character in these desolate worlds filled up with enemies. There are a bunch of things in the game that are just straight up creepy, like the eel in Dire Dire Docks, the evil piano in the Haunted Mansion, and of course, Wet Dry World. If you haven't played Mario 64, then I would highly recommend it since it's one of the best games, well, ever made. Popsicle by Twisted Grim. I'm glad this video is on the iceberg. I'm just gonna play it for you. I remember seeing that when I was like nine and being freaked out by it and just trying to forget it, but nowadays I think the video is hilarious and I'm glad it's here. For whatever reason, this awakened a lot of nostalgia in me, and I'm not really sure why. Fallen Angel in Catalonia. This entry is referring to an old YouTube video of two Spanish men walking around in the woods until they find this thing. Yeah, I remember being super scared by this. Some people thought it was proof of the rake, but it's probably just a drug addict or fake. Point of no return. Real demons caught on tape. Real Demons Caught on Tape is a classic YouTube video portraying a man being attacked by demons. The video itself is short but gets everything it needs to down. The man recording flees to his bedroom and sees a bunch of hands coming out of the ceiling and walls. Small arms start to come from under his door and eventually a humanoid creature made out of hands appears. This video is really creepy and the special effects are amazing. Many kids thought this was real and for good reason. As one of the comments reads, this looks like a scene out of a high-budget horror movie that never got finished, and yeah, it definitely does. Evil Barney. And this entry is referring to a weird sub-series of YouTube videos portraying Barney to be evil. I have no idea why, but people are obsessed with making evil Barney videos in a bunch of different formats. One of the more popular types of these videos is basically slideshows with pictures of evil Barney with MS Paint drawings on it. 
in these videos, creepy music would play as it showed Barney being evil. There are also videos playing a Barney theme in reverse, while, while text would display the supposedly hidden messages in the song. Yeah, it's hilarious nowadays, but back then I personally found this stuff scary. But I can't watch any of these videos without going into a fit of laughter nowadays. Squidward eats Spongebob alive. This entry is referring to this image that was spread around the internet. I'm pretty sure I either saw it on Roblox or YouTube, but regardless, the image was pretty disturbing back in the day. Harry Pothead. Harry Pothead is most likely referring to this old Newgrounds Flash game. In it, Harry Potter smokes a bunch of different things. Eventually, he smokes a pistol and douches himself. Yeah, pretty disturbing. This game was actually made by Tom Fulp, the creator of Newgrounds. Realistic Mario asking if you want to get scared out of your mind. This entry is referring to this video. Want to get scared out of your mind? I remember seeing this picture of Mario back in the day and it always just made me uncomfortable. As a huge Mario fan at the time, seeing a weird version of him was always just, well, weird. Pinkie Pie loses her mind. This entry is referring to a scene in My Little Pony where Pinkie Pie thinks that nobody cares about her party, so she starts getting depressed and going crazy. There's one iconic scene where her eyes go to the side and she makes a psychotic smile. Everything around her, these inanimate objects, start to move and start talking. Yeah, not something you'd really expect from My Little Pony. Jackass Transformation. This is referring to that infamous scene from Pinocchio where the bad kids start to turn into donkeys. When I was younger, I really never wanted to watch this part of the movie since it was always very disturbing. Kool-Aid Killer. This is a classic Dane Bow video. It's in the format of a trailer for a horror movie. The Kool-Aid Man effect is like that of the Annoying Orange which makes him look really creepy. It shows the Kool-Aid Man killing people and of course the effects are cheesy, but I remember being pretty scared by this when I was younger. It's a great video and I'd highly recommend checking it out. Racist Mario. Whew. Racist Mario is a YouTube animation that most people watching this have probably seen. It's a video portraying Mario going through a racist murderous rage while in a game of Mario Kart. I don't think YouTube would like it if I described the events in this video, but it's definitely very scary given all the blood and screaming and violence. Who's hungry? Who's Hungry is referring to an old YouTube animation displaying a story similar to Hansel and Gretel. In this animation, two kids are abducted by an ice cream man. Turns out the ice cream man makes ice cream out of kids. The little girl stabs him with a crowbar, seemingly killing him. The girl saves the boy only for the ice cream man to come back to life. Fortunately, he slips and falls into a blender. The girl then activates the blender, killing him. This animation is really good, but very scary. And I'm actually just remembering this now that I'm pretty sure I actually watched this video back in the day. Like, while I was writing the script for this, I didn't watch it. I thought I was seeing it for the first time, but I actually think I remember this, which uh, just makes it that much creepier. Bunchy the Green Llama. If you were on the internet during the late 2000s slash early 2010s, you'll probably remember this guy. I always liked him, but I can see how some kids found him scary. Deke logo. This is referring to the iconic logo for the animation studio Deke. I I'm guessing it's on here because some kids might have found the giant text coming from the sky scary. Pingu's nightmare. This is referring to that classic scene in Pingu, where Pingu goes to sleep and has a nightmare with a giant creepy seal. Yeah, it's pretty creepy and I didn't like it as a kid. Dexter's lab sore eyes. This is an incredibly weird scene from Dexter's lab, and yeah, it's pretty creepy. Not much more than that. Men in Black Monsters. This entry is pretty self-explanatory. This is simply referring to the more creepy monsters in the Men in Black movies. Dolphin Muzzle. Dolphin Muzzle is a YouTube video showing off a weirdly realistic looking dolphin costume. The video is uploaded by Northfur, who sells plastic animal faces for costumes and furries and stuff. Yeah, I don't like it looking at this thing either. Let's, let's just move on. Rigby's Fear. This entry is referring to an episode of Regular Show where Mordecai and Rigby watch an old horror movie about a haunted taxi. 
The imagery of the horror movie could be totally scary to younger kids the way it eats people and spits out their bones. Later, Rigby has a bunch of nightmares about the movie, which are pretty creepy. I could totally see myself being scared by this when I was younger. Valve intro. I remember whenever I opened up TF2 or Gary's Mod, I always felt pretty uncomfortable looking at this guy, which I assume other people did as well. I mean, just look at the guy. I mean, imagine just having that thing in your head. Yeah, pretty uncomfortable. General Scar suffocates in space and dies. This entry is referring to a scene from The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. The episode seems to be a monkey's paw sort of plot. The character General Scar gets tempted to be the ruler of the world by this wishbone, a skull that would tempt people to use it and, well, mess things up according to their wishes. General Scar gets a statue of himself erected under him. The statue continues to rise up until it reaches the upper atmosphere. General Scar then brutally suffocates in space in a very disturbing way. Yeah, I, I don't know how this made it on Cartoon Network. Junji Ito Manga Junji Ito is a manga artist who makes really scary and disturbing art. His art is beloved to this day because of its incredibly creepy subject matter. Honestly, yeah, this stuff is really scary to this day. Klasky Chupo Klasky Chupo was the animation studio behind many iconic shows in the 90s, including the Rugrats. This was their logo. I personally thought it was cool as a little kid, but I can see how this could be creepy. Bong Ching Dong Ghost This is referring to a viral horror webcomic. It's most notable for this scene. It was played by many popular YouTubers at the time, and I remember it freaking me out. Raka Raka's Ronald McDonald videos. Oh man, this one hits close to home. This entry is referring to a series of videos made by the YouTube channel Raka Raka, showing Ronald McDonald being incredibly violent and brutal. Nowadays, the videos don't really have the same shock value that they used to. But at the time, these videos made me really, really uncomfortable and disturbed. And many others. A way I used to get rid of the stress from watching these videos is I'd write Raka Raka on a piece of paper and uh, I'd tape it to an open door and then shoot it with a Nerf gun. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of Raka Raka, if you couldn't tell. Peppermint Park Peppermint Park was an old puppet show that many people find incredibly disturbing, and yeah, it's creepy. I know that if I saw this on TV as a little kid, I would not like it. The show is the butt of the joke in many YouTube videos for its scary look. Lost Media this subject is pretty broad, but I can totally relate to it. It could be anything from A Day with Spongebob to Crybaby Lane or that freaky flicker movie or whatever it was called. I was very interested in lost media and, well, I would get freaked out by it at times. It's a really cool subject that I don't think should go anywhere as lots of cool stuff is discovered from the community around it. Bottom of the Ice Mwah. Munchkin this entry is referring to an old urban legend claiming that in the original version of The Wizard of Oz, you can see a munchkin in the background of a scene. The alleged corpse creepily just swings back and forth as the characters happily skip and sing. This scene allegedly is just showing a bird, but does that look like a bird to you? In the remastered cut, the scene is completely different, uh, very clearly showing a bird. So what gives? Is this real or is it not? Well, turns out it's actually a fake. The footage of the supposed original VHS all comes from one individual YouTube channel which claims to show footage of an old VHS tape. Uh, but wait a minute, it turns out that people have bought VHS tapes older than the one in this YouTube channel, and the bird was always there. So despite being convincing, the original Munchkin footage has a slight editing error, where the bird's wing clips in for just a second. So it's fake. But honestly, it's pretty believable. The production of Wizard of Oz is one of the most awful and abusive and painful productions of all time. It was really a living hell to everyone who worked on it. If you want to learn more on the production of this film, you should watch Emperor Lemon's video on the subject. I think the reason that this legend was so scary is because it's one of those urban legends that just kind of spread everywhere. Whether it be on the playground, during recess, or maybe even around a campfire on a cold night. The story has been around since before the internet, making it very well known between generations. Spongebob Sick Pants Spongebob Sick Pants is an animated parody of Spongebob created by Chris O'Neill. Okay, cool. Chris O'Neill, aka Oni AG, aka Oni Plays, is a very funny man who used to make a lot of cartoons on Newgrounds and YouTube. Now he runs a YouTube channel with him and his friends. Psychic Pebbles, a Green Goblin Man, Joshua Tomar, a known psychopath, and others. Anyway, Chris made a Spongebob cartoon that's really bizarre, crude, and violent. 
There are gratuitous scenes of characters vomiting on each other and characters getting killed for like no reason. SpongeBob and Patrick end up bringing a boy's corpse to Sandy and she doesn't answer because of drugs and then they throw a rock through the window and then the dome breaks and then Patrick and SpongeBob get eaten by a shark and Gary gets run over. Yeah, what the hell is Chris O'Neill smoking? Monster Party Beta. Alright, so this is a really obscure one. Monster Party is an old game on the NES, which is a monster-themed platformer game. It's a great game and it's super cheesy, but the thing is, this was one of those games that had a very mysterious beta version, like Luigi's Mansion. There were only a few screenshots of this original beta version of the game, and they seemed a lot darker and more disturbing than the original game. People actually tried to rebuild the beta version of this game, which is really cool. Eventually, the allegedly terrifying beta version of the game was released, and it was not actually that bad. The changes made to the official release were mostly just changes to characters who in the original were parodies of copyrighted horror characters. For example, the first boss was a parody of Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors, but in the final version was changed to a pitcher plant that shoots bubbles. The cat boss was originally a gremlin, the Grim Reaper was originally a xenomorph from Alien, and many many more. The official release itself has some pretty messed up moments in it, like the first level where the cute friendly map turns into this bloody disturbing mess while creepy music plays. The end of the game is especially disturbing. It seems like a happy ending until this happens. Three Men and a Baby Ghost this entry is referring to an urban legend about a supposed ghost in the movie Three Men and a Baby. The story goes that a boy was killed in the house that the movie was filmed in, and his ghost appears in the background of the scene. Apparently, the mother of the boy watched the movie and went crazy after seeing her son, and had to be put in a mental institution. But guess what? None of this is true. The supposed ghost is just a cardboard cutout of the actor Ted Danson who was in the movie. The cutout was to be used in a deleted scene which would explain why it was there, but obviously, this was unknown to the audience. The story about the mother and the boy is obviously not true in any way. In fact, they didn't even film it in a house. This was all filmed on a soundstage, and there's no possible way it could be true. The story itself is still pretty disturbing if you, you know, don't think about it. And I remember hearing about it as a kid and it freaking me out. So I totally understand why you guys suggested it. Hambuster. Hambuster is a short animated film by Sup and Focom team. The video starts with the fat guy sitting down in the park to eat a burger. The burger comes to life and then consumes a baby. We then see the fat guy getting chased by the burger through the streets and it tries to eat him. And eats other people in the process. Luckily he gets away and goes into a subway. We then see a restaurant selling burgers who come to life and gruesomely eat everyone in the restaurant. I'm gonna blur this footage since it's like really really gory and I'm sure that most of you don't want to be seeing that but it's really intense. Hands get chopped off, fingernails ripped out, etc. The burgers then expand larger and larger to the point where one of them destroys the subway that the fat guy's on. He gets eaten by the burger and finds the baby from the start and saves him. He finds a way to kill the burger and successfully does. All seems good until an army of burgers rush him and the video ends. I'm sure this video was just trying to send the message that fast food is bad and can kill you. Um, so it showed the food just completely tearing people to shreds in a, in a really detailed, gruesome way. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know why and how this scare kids. Scary Gummy Bear. Alright, so this is the first bit of lost media on this iceberg. Scary Gummy Bear was a screamer video on YouTube that showed the original Gummy Bear video until he goes into the car, and then it switches to the Kefi Coffee Zombie Jump Scare video. The original is completely lost, on YouTube at least. We know that the thumbnail was orange text on a black background and was clearly made in Movie Maker. If you remember this video, if you have any information on it, do not hesitate to comment about it. Or, I guess alternatively, uh, in a more secure way of me actually seeing the video, you could put it on my Discord server. And the, uh, the link is in the description. So the scary gummy bear video is one of mystery and I really hope we end up finding it somehow. I can't really get the Wayback Machine to work too well with YouTube, but that might be a way to find the video. Or at least the thumbnail. The video was most likely uploaded around 2011 and it was viewable in 2012. I hope this info helps, and so the search begins! D-Fantasy. This is the one you've all been waiting for. D-Y-E Fantasy, or, or Die Fantasy, or, or D-Fantasy because it's a, it's a French person who made it, is an animated music video for a song by the name of Fantasy by, well, D. The beautifully animated music video for this actually pretty cool song is one of the most unique ones I've ever seen. 
So the music video for Fantasy starts off with a group of teenagers sneaking into a closed swimming pool. The teenage dream. Right off the bat, there's some slightly explicit content. Where you see a girl's butt, underskirt, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, this is this is relevant, trust me, I'm not just mentioning it. Um, there are four teens, two of which are presumably boyfriend and girlfriend, alongside two others who seem to be a blind date of sorts. The girl, who is our main character, is the more shy and innocent one compared to her friends. A couple are making out and take it a little further, while the other guy tries to kiss the girl, and she quickly refuses. Ouch. Poor guy. Anyway, to evade this poor sap, she jumps right into the pool and just kind of floats there until something starts poking around in her swimsuit. Obviously, she's terrified of this and leaves the pool. The guy tries to help her to see what's going on. They then see the couple who have turned into this gross, zombie-like version of themselves. The shy girl runs away, but the guy wasn't so lucky. He just sits there in shock as he gets, well, killed by this disgusting abomination resembling his friends. The creatures have mutated into these really disturbing and scary designs and they try to attack the girl until she jumps into the pool and swims all the way down to the bottom. She sees a reflection of herself and swims through it. It leads her to this weird, strange of things upside down looking world and the sun shines in her eyes and her eyes explode as she gazes upon this giant beast. So you might be wondering, what the hell did I just watch? Well, turns out this video has a greater meaning behind it all. Well, obviously there is, but what is it? Well, the common consensus is that this is a video about the loss of innocence and fear of sexual imagery. It's essentially a gruesome coming-of-age story. Teenagers do a lot of crazy shit. Not every teenager is used to it or comfortable with it, or is even experienced with it in any way, so it can be kind of a scary thing. The monster in the girl's pants could be a representation of puberty and being freaked out when your body's changing. The girl's eyes exploding is probably symbolic of how, no matter how hard we try, growing up and losing your childlike innocence is inevitable. I'm pretty sure this meaning was lost on a lot of the kids who clicked on this video and didn't understand what was happening until the zombie mutant showed up and everything. Um, I think I can safely say that to some, watching this video was a traumatic experience and maybe even gave the kids watching the loss of innocence that the video was trying to portray. I remember clicking on this video, but only watching until the more inappropriate parts and then clicking off, since I knew that this wasn't really, uh, you know, for me. Although, lots of other kids unfortunately didn't do the same thing. To all the people who suggested this, I hope this helped you get over your fear of this video. Also, quick side note, if you buy the song on iTunes, which I did, you'll see that the album art is straight up weirdcore. But like, this is from way before weirdcore became a thing. It's Pretty cool stuff. Nanny cam fail. This entry is referring to a very shocking video on YouTube that shows a little girl just coloring and singing to herself until a creepy ass hand comes out from under the sheet and grabs the little girl in a super jarring and breakneck speed. The video is obviously fake, but come on, this is pretty scary. The abrupt speed at which the little girl is snatched really comes out of nowhere since the rest of the video is completely innocent. Elisa Lamb. Alright, this is a pretty dark one. The mysterious case of Elisa Lam is a story about a Canadian woman who checked into the Stay On Main slash Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. On January 26, 2013, there was some incredibly strange footage of Elisa in an elevator, which is the last time she had been seen alive. In this footage, she acts extremely strangely and seemingly hides from something. Her movements are weird and confusing, and at some point it looks like she's talking to someone. However, the elevator door remains open the entire time through all of this until she leaves. Elisa was bipolar, so this could potentially explain the behavior. She was later found in the hotel's water tank with her clothes off. This in itself is an anomaly. To get into there, she would have to 1. Get to the top of the tank platform, climb all the way up a 10 foot ladder, open the 20 pound lid, get into the tank and then somehow close the lid when she was inside the tank and then take her clothes off. So what happened? Some think that there was a supernatural element involved. See, the hotel once hosted Jack Unterweger in 1991, a serial killer. There was also an unsolved murder in 1964, so was there a ghost involved? Well, no, not at all. This kind of supernatural conspiracy talk is in all honesty kind of disrespectful. Lisa Lamb was a very real human being who was in an extremely unfortunate situation, so turning it into a ghost story really just feels wrong. In all likelihood, it was either just something that she did herself because she was off meds, or someone who was working or staying at the hotel was responsible. People staying in the hotel complained that the water tasted disgusting and was dark in color. 
Apparently her body had been in the water tank for weeks, which is disgusting because people were drinking corpse water without even knowing it. The story is very unfortunate and we still don't have a conclusion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I think it's pretty obvious as to why people suggested this. Since even learning about it as a teenager is disturbing, and obviously for kids this grim and very true story was a very disturbing thing to learn about. Bootleg DVDs. So this entry is referring to a very specific thing requested by a viewer. I can't find the original comment, so this is mostly from memory, but I think I have the gist of it down. In both the United States and Mexico, there were a lot of bootleg DVDs back in the 2000s. These bootleg DVDs were often of very low quality, and when it came to new movies, they would usually be crappy camcorder recordings from a movie theater, which had a bit of a creepy aura to them, but that's not what this entry is talking about. Sometimes, the vendors would give you a DVD with the case of the movie being what you bought, but instead, you would actually put in your DVD player and you'd get something completely different. Sometimes it would be horror movies or strange Mexican shows or something along those lines. Imagine being a kid in 2008. Your dad brings back a DVD of Wally, -E, which you've been wanting to see. You pop the DVD into your DVD player and you see a very disturbing horror movie. Maybe it's a zombie related thing or even a classic like Friday the 13th. The quality is bad and grainy, the sounds are tinny, and the Spanish subtitles flash on screen faster than you can read. That's a pretty scary situation, right? Well, that actually happened to a lot of kids, and it left a mark on them. This is the next step in analog horror, which if you don't know, is a genre that utilizes old technology for its horror, like VHS tapes and that kind of thing. In my opinion, and many others, the future of analog horror will be from old YouTube videos and DVDs. We see some examples of this already, but I think it's going to take off in the future. Like, 240p horror is going to be what it's going to be, essentially. I think these bootleg DVDs are a great example as to why. Cartoon Rule 34 Alright, let's uh, make this one quick. This entry is referring to Rule 34 art of innocent cartoon characters. Rule 34 being the 34th rule of the internet. Quote, if it exists, there's no front of it, unquote. There, unfortunately, is a lot of art of this genre of cartoon characters that could be easily accessed by kids just by a simple Google Images search. Nasty stuff. Japanese Furby commercial. So there's a YouTube video by the name of Creepy Japanese Furby commercial that looks totally normal at first. Just to give some context, back in the year 2012, the Furby line of animatronic pet toys was brought back from the dead in a modern fashion, and they were extremely popular. They were beloved by kids at the time. This YouTube video claiming to show a Japanese commercial was pretty intriguing to kids since it had a great thumbnail and just the concept of a foreign commercial for something that you like is pretty interesting. The video itself started off pretty innocent, showing some Furbies while some Vocaloid music plays in the background. Very quickly it takes a turn for the worse when some Illuminati imagery is seen implying that the Furbies are in some way satanic. That is very, very quickly confirmed when a disturbing montage displaying crazy ass cult imagery is shown and the Furby getting progressively more and more messed up in it getting burned alive, uh, having a snake on it, having a cow skull on its head, and then it goes back to normal. So I think this is pretty obvious as to why it's on the list. Uh, the fact that this was indirectly marketed directly at kids is uh, really the fault of the YouTube algorithm, but still, it, it reached a lot of children. In hindsight, it's a very well done video that really perfectly captures all the horrific satanic shit that it features. Uh, to be clear, it's not a real commercial, um, it's uh, fake. Ash beats up Pikachu for stealing his hat. This is an animated parody of Pokemon, where Ash and Pikachu are playing until Pikachu steals his hat and Ash proceeds to curse him out and run after him. The curses are bleeped, but still. After eventually catching Pikachu, Ash proceeds to beat him up. We see this from Pikachu's perspective while his blood sprays on the screen. We then see what happens days later, with Ash at a Pokemon competition. He tries to get Pikachu out of the ball, and what comes out is just a yellow goop. This animation is just unnecessarily violent and mean-spirited, and I'm glad I never watched it back in the day. It's, uh, it's messed up. Peanut Butter Recall In 2007, there was a contamination of Peter Pan and Great Value peanut butter with salmonella, killing some people who ate it and putting others in the hospital. Jim Adler, a workplace injury-related law firm, put out a commercial telling people to contact them if they had a jar of this peanut butter. Here's the video. If you are one of the many who suffered from food poisoning because of contaminated peanut butter, you may be entitled to a cash award. If you were hospitalized or if someone you know died from contaminated peanut butter, call attorney Jim Adler right now. If this has happened to you, keep the jar. If you've been hospitalized, you may be entitled to a cash award. Some Peter Pan and Great Value peanut butter has been recalled. Keep the jar and call attorney Jim Adler now at 713-777-4000. 
I'm not sure exactly why, but this video has just such an unsettling aura to it. The creepy music in the background, the voices, the idea that people were killed by eating such a common food as peanut butter, all of it, it just kind of reminds me of that Omega Mart uh, lemon commercial. This peanut butter ad recall really reminds me of something that I would see while watching Nickelodeon late at night at my grandma's house with all the lights off. To this day, it's still very unnerving. Lost Tapes Lost Tapes is a TV show that aired on Animal Planet in 2008. The program was a mockumentary style show about people finding a bunch of fictional creatures, you know, like cryptids and stuff. The show was often really scary because the creatures were violent and either killed or attacked the people in the show. The fact that the show presented itself as it was real, and also the fact that it aired on Animal Planet, which is a non-fiction channel, really made it terrifying to those who didn't know it was fake, and even to those who did, it was still, like, intense stuff. The show lives on in many people's memories, and I'm glad I got to add it back into this video. Booth World Booth World Industries is a pretty interesting and interactive creepypasta. The story is about a man who gets a call from a random number saying, Welcome to Booth World Industries, my name is Samantha, and I will be your operator today. Name? The author gives a fake name to the woman on the phone, and she explains that the fake name cannot be used. He then decides to give her the name of his ex-girlfriend. Remodeling is scheduled for August 21st, 2015. At 3 o'clock that day, he got a call from a number and heard his ex-girlfriend being murdered on the line. The author is surprised by this, but is happy about it because of the resentment he had against her. Yeah, he's, uh, pretty messed up. The guy even schedules another remodeling. While trying to schedule this, he is told that he is going to get remodeled that Wednesday. The only way he can stop the remodeling is to recruit over 1,000 people to Booth World Industries. The author of the story then invites everyone reading to join Booth World. All that you have to do is call the number. Obviously, it's, uh, it's fake, but it's pretty unnerving. I'm sure a lot of kids called this number just out of sheer curiosity, and something that's cool is that sometimes the creator of the story would actually call the people who called Booth World again, and uh, they would chat about it. Which is, uh, it's pretty cool. Still a pretty graphic story, which is why kids were scared by it. Alien on Roof. Alright, this one really feels like it would be in a top 15 video, so I'm gonna narrate it like that. Number 129, Alien on Roof. This entry is referring to a video of a large alien on a man's roof. The alien is big and scary and looks very real. The alien looks real, like it's real life and it scared me beyond belief. The sound the alien makes kinda sounds like a cute little mouse, but the alien is nothing but. People say that it is CGI, but I really think it's real. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Shrek is loved. Alright, I gotta be kind of careful with this one, but... Alright, so Shrek is love, Shrek is life is a copypasta from 4chan about a boy summoning Shrek and getting, uh, violated by him. The copypasta picked up a lot of steam and eventually got an animated adaptation, which is what the most popular version of the story is. I remember watching this video when I was a little kid and I had absolutely no idea what was going on. Like, at all. No idea. I never found the video disturbing for this reason, but after re-watching it, yeah, this shit's not okay. Tromaville Movies This one is pretty self-explanatory. Tromaville Movies are super violent and gruesome. Even their most popular movie, The Toxic Avenger, features extremely violent and disturbing scenes, some even being towards children. The contents of these films are genuinely traumatizing if watched by a child. ELH ELH is an unused beta boss from the original Luigi's Mansion. Not much is known about it since clearly it was scrapped pretty early on. All that remains of ELH are a few animations and some elemental abilities. There's something so creepy about this idle animation. It just stands there, swinging back and forth slowly. As a kid, I was fascinated with the mystery of the beta of Luigi's Mansion, and this was always one of the things that freaked me out the most about it. It's genuinely so unnerving, and the fact that it was unfinished adds so much to it. I feel like if this was fully animated and textured, it wouldn't be as creepy, but in the state it's in, it really is creepy. Evil Stick The Evil Stick is a toy that appeared in certain dollar stores that was far more sinister than it seemed. The package of the toy was innocent enough, featuring a stolen anime character and promising wonderful music. What you get is this. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? If you remove the foil, you can clearly see a Photoshop picture of a girl slitting a wrist. Yeah. This toy was bought by a mother for her two-year-old. Obviously, she didn't see the picture before she bought the toy since you have to pull a battery tab to actually activate the lights and sounds, 
which most people wouldn't do in the store. She went to the news about it, and that popularized the strange toy. Turns out this image is a gore art piece, portraying a vampire preparing to drink her own blood. The creator of this image never gave permission for his art to be on this toy, and he never intended for children to ever see it. The image on the toy is edited further, which is bizarre. Something that's also very weird about it is that it's not the only picture on the toy. There were a bunch of other pictures on the toys, some of which were completely innocent, and some of which were disturbing. There were pictures of anime characters and zombies, angels and monsters. I've got to ask the one big question about this all. What were they thinking? Well, turns out the toy was mass manufactured by a random factory in China. Obviously. The toy is extremely rare, so if you've got one, then you're really, really lucky. In total, this toy and the buzz around it was totally scary to kids at the time, and I'm glad you guys suggested it. T is for Toilet. T is for Toilet is a stop motion animation video by Lee Hardcastle, who was featured earlier. The video features a kid using the toilet without a kitty seat for the first time, and wait, that's the little shit from Hamster Hell! Anyway, he's scared to use the toilet, but his parents encourage him, since there isn't anything to worry about, to them at least. The toilet then shoots out a bunch of green shit, and short after this, a bunch of other stuff in the bathroom starts to leak it. The toilet then grows eyes and heavily resembles that Ghostbusters toy from the 1980s, the toilet very gruesomely kills and eats the parents, while the little shit from Hamster Hell just watches. It turns out, it was all just a dream. The kid gets up to use the toilet, but gets stuck in it. The dad runs in, sees his son stuck, and starts laughing. The sink then falls off the wall, and uh, the kid passes away, to say the least. Uh, need I say anything else? The Wyoming Incident. The Wyoming Incident is an urban legend from 2006 about a television station in Wyoming being hacked as a mysterious video plays with some creepy faces and distorted audio. The hijacking lasted for over six minutes before the broadcast resumed back to normal. That same night, hundreds of people went to local hospitals with symptoms of headaches, hallucinations, reasonless fear, etc. This was either caused by the infrasound contained in the video, the imagery, or both. The Wyoming Incident is actually an ARG, and it's one of, if not the oldest ARG in internet history. It goes pretty deep, but I don't have the time to explain the whole thing. Dancing Frog Legs This entry is referring to a video by the name of Frog Legs Dancing with a Little Salt. The video shows exactly that, some fresh cut frog legs sitting on a plate. When a little salt is added, boom, they start moving. The video is incredibly weird, and the way that the legs move is pretty unnerving and unnatural, and lands itself in the uncanny valley. Now, what the hell is happening? Are these zombies? Should you be scared? Well, no, they aren't zombies. And since they are freshly cut, the cells in the legs are still alive, meaning that when salt is spread on it, it increases the electrical conductivity, releasing some electrical potential, which is how nerves and cells send signals to each other. The signals are being sent, causing the muscles to twitch. Even with this explanation, it's still a very unnerving video that doesn't really leave your mind. There are a bunch of other videos of food that is, uh, well, let's just say freshly killed, still moving, and they're honestly really disturbing. Shed 17 Shed 17 is a disturbing horror parody of Thomas the Tank Engine. It's essentially an explanation as to how Thomas came to be. It's framed as if it's a documentary in this universe. In it, you learn about a boy named Thomas who was killed by a train. In an attempt to bring the boy back to life, two characters try and combine the DNA of Thomas with a the train. They try and do this multiple times and fail each one until the perfect one is made. Later, there are people trying to imitate this sensation, but all the imitations led to the death of the host. Eventually, Thomas visits Shed 17, the place where he was created, only to find a bunch of failed attempts to create him, essentially. He realizes that he's just a clone, and he loses it, causing his skeleton to pop out, leading him to die. The imagery in this video is genuinely disturbing, and I feel really sorry for the kids who watch this video, especially considering the fact that many of them watched the show when they were young, or in some situations were still fans of it. So. The Zone Archive is a page on Newgrounds which features Rule 34 parodies of popular kids' shows, most notably My Life as a Teenage Robot. In the case of this animation, it's uh, it's just really messed up. I mean, the character gets spear and she's a teenager, programmed to be a teenager at least. In reality, she's like four years old, which makes it even more messed up. Zone Sama is the person behind it all. He has ties to people like Shadman, which is beyond messed up. Some of you younger ones out there probably recognize this character, Zone Tan. She appears in the background of a level in Friday Night Funkin'. The reason that this is on the iceberg is because, unfortunately, kids found these Rule 34 cartoons and were traumatized by the, well, girl. Angrier the Birds. Angrier the Birds is a claymation animation about a self-insert character guy being upset that Angry Birds is popular and his claymation variety show isn't. 
he decides to buy a gun because he's upset and gets one for free from uh, Mr. King Hippo. He then decides to go back to where the Angry Birds are and mercilessly blast them all to bloody bits. The animation on this is incredibly good, like movie quality, and so is the gore. It's just sad to watch these birds and pigs get brutally torn apart for no reason. The carnage lasts for nearly three minutes and just gets more and more gruesome. Eventually, Mr. T joins the guy while carrying a bazooka, and then Miley Cyrus and the Annoying Orange show up, and then you can guess what happens to them. At the end, Mr. T shoots the camera, and we see Tex saying, pretty hardcore, right? Gun violence is for fiction and not for reality. And then the video ends. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty sadistic. I know if I saw this as a kid, I'd be beyond disturbed and upset. Sitting at only around 30,000 views, so I'd be surprised if any of you guys remember this. Kill the Powerpuff Girls. This is an incredibly messed up and brutal Newgrounds game where you, well, kill the Powerpuff Girls for no apparent reason. It's upsetting and violent and awful, and I really don't want to bring much attention to it. I'm not going to show any of the footage since it's beyond messed up, and I feel terrible for any kids who had the misfortune of watching this video or playing the game. Bananas exploding on face. This entry is referring to an incredibly strange video of a man with a mask on. Attached to said mask, there are a bunch of bananas that have explosives inside them. The guy lights the fuses for the explosives, and, well, the bananas explode. The descriptions of this video says, quote, A Brooklyn-based artist, William Lanson, put on a mask embedded with firecracker-stuffed bananas and filmed himself lighting each fuse, causing the bananas to explode. What's the meaning? Slant Art says, The banana is a classic agent for slapstick pratfall and has also come to represent pitfalls of corporate farming practices. I say bananas are evil and must be destroyed. What is it with Brooklyn art people? <laughs> Always so weird. And you see them like every six blocks or so. It's, uh, it's a lot. Brooklyn's a weird place. Uh, the video is strange and unnerving, and that's exactly why it's here. Blankroomsoup.avi Blankroomsoup.avi is an incredibly weird video that is allegedly from the dark web, portraying a man sitting at a table eating what looks to be a bowl of soup. From behind him, a creepy mascot character approaches and seemingly starts to comfort the man as he gets more and more uneasy. Another one of these characters enters the room, and the man eating the soup starts crying. So what gives? What's the point of this video? What is it? Well, these characters are known as Ray Ray. They're from a touring show by an artist named Raymond Percy. Allegedly, these character mascots were stolen from him while he was touring, and then he was later sent this video alongside some other disturbing ones. So, who made this, and why? Well, honestly, I kind of think it was Raymond Piercy, to be completely honest, because, well, after they were stolen, he still had two more extra suits that he just happened to have that he could keep working with. As far as we know, he didn't get the police involved, which you'd think if you had your property stolen, and then a video using your stolen property showing allegedly, like, torture, you'd contact the police about it, or something at least. I don't know, it really just feels more like a publicity stunt from him more than anything, which... It's not really a bad thing, because it's a really creepy video and it's like, a very iconic thing in internet culture. Look, I could be completely wrong, this could be a real video of a man actually getting tortured by these characters, but something about it just doesn't really feel like that's the case. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. r slash 5050 r slash 5050 is a subreddit dedicated to showing you either something horrid and disgusting or something cute and pleasant. What you see depends on your luck, since your chance is 50-50. You could see a cute puppy on one side, or you could see something disgusting, like, I don't know, someone stepping on a nail. Like Run the Gauntlet, which is in the original Iceberg series, I'm gonna heavily encourage you not to use this subreddit. There's some really, really disgusting and scarring, traumatizing imagery on this subreddit, and it's, uh, it's messed up. You don't want to see it. The subreddit has been visited by many popular YouTubers and streamers, leading to their young audiences wanting to try it for themselves, which obviously led to awful trauma from the terrible imagery on the subreddit. The Dark Depths, Iggy35. Iggy35 is a YouTube channel that specifies in making creepy videos with special effects and puppets. Obviously, any of these can be scary when you see them as a kid. Bloody Door. Bloody Door is referring to an old YouTube video portraying a bloody door Said bloody door opens to reveal a man with a stroller. He puts his hands into the stroller and pulls out blood and then starts to spread blood all over his face. There's tense and stressful music displayed through the entire thing and it's just pretty scary. The man then vanishes and the door closes. Just when you think the video's over, you get jump scared. Apparently there was some sort of thing about how if you watched this video, you'd get killed or something. And it was popularized by Rhett and Link doing a reaction to it. Clerds. 
Uh, I don't like this video. Clerds is a weird furry animation thing with annoying music, repetitive animation, and a bunch of sexual furry images flashing on screen. The video has a significant dislike to like ratio, and yeah, I hate it too. Malio. Malio was the Mario equivalent to Ouija, who I discussed in the first part. He was portrayed as doing some creepy things back in the YouTube poop days, but I'm not really sure why he's this far down the list. Katie's scary face. Here, I'll just play the video. Yeah, I think you know why it's on the list. Creepy chin faces. This is referring to those videos of people drawing eyes on their chins and doing weird stuff with said chin faces. I always thought they were funny, but I can see how people could find them creepy. Amy gets possessed. This entry is referring to a scene in the show Sonic X, where Amy Rose gets possessed by ghosts and goes against the protagonist. I can see this being creepy mostly because of the ways her eyes change. Drag me to hell. Christine Brown is on her way to having it all. A devoted boyfriend, a hard-earned job promotion, and a bright future. But when it comes to make a tough decision that evicts an elderly woman from her house, Christine becomes the victim of an evil curse. Now she only has three days to dissuade a dark spirit from stealing her soul before she is dragged to hell for an eternity of unthinkable torment. Reads the description of this movie. Of course a bunch of creepy stuff happens and it's very scary. Evil Elmo. This could be referring to a number of videos, portraying Elmo being evil or the infamous malfunctioning Elmo doll who made death threats towards a kid. The video by the name of The Story of Email. <laughs> I love this. The vi <laughs> the this video by the name of The Story of Evil Elmo is hilarious by today's standards, but terrifying in 2008. I honestly. I, you gotta watch The Story of Evil Elmo, it's, it's so good. Nightmare Wolf. This entry is referring to a YouTube animation released in 2014 by Tony Cry Knight. It's a pretty creepy animation portraying a wolf running through the woods as creepy things flash on screen. Eventually, another wolf is found. Said wolf turns its neck around, twisting it, and has a creepy face. Yeah, I'm glad I never saw this when I was younger. The House 1 and 2. These were point-and-click horror games, and yeah, well, they're creepy. Sad Satan. Sad Satan is an incredibly mysterious story about a supposed horror game from the deep web that includes incredibly disturbing and illegal content in it. There are a bunch of videos covering this and they do a way better job explaining it than I can. The footage of the game itself isn't the creepiest, but it's really the story around it that's what's scary. Vicious 516's Creepypastas Vicious 516 was a YouTuber who made a whole variety of videos including creepypastas, and creepypastas are scary. The original Lights Out short film. This entry is referring to the classic short film Lights Out. You probably recognize the trope of having the lights off and seeing something only for it to disappear when you turn the lights back on. And yeah, this is it. I remember being really scared by the concept of this, and I think I actually first saw it in a My Little Pony animation, but I'm not completely sure. Still very scary. Max's Nightmare. This is referring to the opening scene from a Goofy movie. The scary part is where Max, the son of Goofy, transforms into his father, Goofy, in a weirdly disturbing way. Monster House. Monster House is a classic kids horror movie using motion capture CGI. I had known about it for a while, but I only saw it in October of 2020, and well, while I was watching the movie, I was thinking, how is this for kids? Everything down to the way the characters move is creepy, and there are some things that are straight up scary, like the wife's dead body controlling the house and the way that the house eats people. It's a good movie, and I would recommend it if you haven't seen it. Scooby-Doo Zombie Island. This one is pretty self-explanatory. There are zombies and creepy stuff in this Scooby-Doo special. Bart the General. 
Bart the General is either referring to the classic Simpsons Season 1 episode of the strange YouTube video of an Australian man named Toadfish moving into Springfield. The video is incredibly bizarre and ends with Marge cheating on Homer with Toadfish. This could also be referring to the scene in the actual episode, Bart the General, where Bart imagines his funeral. This footage is often used in fan-made depiction of the creepypasta Dead Bart. SpongeBob is evil. Oh, I love this one. SpongeBob is a classic YouTube video portraying an evil SpongeBob piñata. The acting is super cheesy, the editing is super dated, and it's just perfect. The video is fantastic, and I would highly recommend you watch it. I found it a bit scary when I was younger, but now it's just the perfect video. Omegle. This one is pretty broad, but also pretty self-explanatory if you know anything about Omegle. But if you don't, Omegle is a website where you and a random stranger talk to each other using your webcams. Sounds fine, right? Well, it's not. Unfortunately, people often stream disturbing and inappropriate things to Omegle. Most of the time it'll be men exposing themselves or something showing a violent crime. Thing is, it used to be trendy to go on Omegle and look for fans as a YouTuber. Lots of YouTubers have small children in their audience. Said children would go on Omegle in hopes of seeing their favorite YouTuber only to see disturbing things that no kid should see. Lots of kids did this and that's why it's on the list. Ghostscape. Ghostscape is a creepy point and click horror game. It's creepy and that's why it's here. Old YouTube Arabic videos. This is referring to a plethora of old Arabic YouTube videos. These videos often have loud foreign music and lots of text flashing through the screen. This genre of YouTube video is often parodied nowadays for its bizarre content and confusing, unnerving visuals. The video on screen now is one of the classic ones that is more popular. Yeah, I always felt like I shouldn't be watching these videos whenever they came up. Smosh Found Dead This is referring to an old Smosh video where the Smosh guys find a flyer on their doorstep for a weird restaurant. They decide to go to it and are greeted by a creepy man. There are only two things on the menu, a hamburger and a mushroom pie. They get the mushroom pie. Their waiter is the same man, and so is the chef. They answer some questions from Twitter until they see one from the owner of the restaurant saying that he has locked the doors and that he will kill them. They call the police, but the police officer that arrives is the same guy that plays all the characters in the restaurant. They black out, and the camera goes to black. The camera comes back on, showing the man in Ian and Anthony's clothes, pretending to be them. And then shows Anthony dead, shirtless, and the man moving his mouth as if he's talking. The video has a very comedic tone, but clearly lots of younger fans of Smosh thought it was real, or at the very least found it very disturbing. Jackety Goust. This entry is referring to a video of a boy with some sort of facial deformation, jumping up and yelling into the camera with a bunch of different effects and music playing over it. I can see how this could be kind of creepy, but in all honesty, I just feel bad for the boy. Update on this, actually. Um... This is actually Justin Simbidis. He still has a channel nowadays. Uh, it's uh, by the same name. And basically, he does Funko Pop videos, reactions to music, some interviews and stuff. It's good stuff. He suffers from progeria, which is an extremely rare progressive genetic disorder that causes children to age rapidly starting in their first two years of life. Children with progeria generally appear normal at birth um, and not many survive it. But he's still going strong. He's got his YouTube channel, he's got a Twitter. I would suggest checking him out. His videos are pretty good. Elmo eats a baby. This is referring to this animation. Um, it was on the iceberg a little earlier. So yeah, if you saw that video, you know it. It's this animation. Zong. This entry is referring to an old zombie apocalypse animation. The animation itself is pretty good. The most disturbing scene in this animation is probably the one where all the innocent civilians are standing at a gate being blocked from entering, only for a bunch of zombies to tear them apart. Run the Gauntlet. This entry is referring to a shock website that displays incredibly disturbing footage of real life events. There are around 20 levels in this and each one gets worse and worse. Do not research this. I've warned you. Everything on this website will mess up your mind no matter what age you are. Do not research this under any circumstances. LiveLeak. LiveLeak is another website, kind of like YouTube, but with no rules. There are incredibly disturbing things on this website, including footage of real-life violent crimes. This website should not be visited by anyone. 
Japanese McDonald's ads. This is a really bizarre series of commercials that aired in Japan that portrayed Ronald McDonald as a psycho stalker. There's a video on YouTube compiling said commercials. I remember seeing them and having my view on Ronald McDonald shaken. Honestly, what were they thinking? Yelling creature. Well, this is it. The final entry on the iceberg. Yelling Creature is a YouTube video created by Rob Herman. I'm going to have you watch the video. Just check it out. No. No. Thoughts? I personally love it. I can see how many people can find it creepy, but I just love it. Everything down to the background, the weird clay body of the creature, and the annoying orange style face, and of course, the sound it makes is just incredible. There are actually some sequels to this video that not many people know about. We have Yelling Creature Santa! And Yelling Pumpkin. So I guess it's kind of a seasonal thing. It's honestly so good. I love it. Alright. So that's it. That fully wraps it up for the Gen Z Childhood Trauma Iceberg. One whole year ago. It's been an entire year. We've been on this journey for a long time now. And I really felt like this was just kind of the best way to kind of have a full send-off to it. Um, obviously, at the end of these videos, there's always something that comes next. There's always something that's like, oh, you see me in this next one. Childhood Trauma Iceberg Community Edition. Oh, all this all sort of stuff. But... You know, I have no plans for future Childhood Trauma Iceberg videos, um, at least for now. I might find another idea or something like that, but as it stands now, this was the final video. But, basically, I just want to let you know that um, I have to say thank you to everyone who's watching right now, because, wow, 2021 was one hell of a year, and I mean that in the best of ways, you know? Uh, there's so much that came from that, so much excitement so many new experiences like so much stuff like that that Jekyll and Hyde video if you know what I'm talking about crazy shit so much stuff um I I would not have a girlfriend without uh -oh. the Gen Z childhood trauma yeah. iceberg series it's very strange uh, been to think about on that series longer than he's known me yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh very hot very hot but you know the thing is is that without the series, you know, I wouldn't have had a taste at success or any type of, you know, super small scale fame, if, if anything. Niche internet micro celebrity. That's what I am. Niche internet micro celebrity. Mm -hmm. uh, we never would have gotten uh, Mars 2112 to be more popular. We never would have gotten fan art sure. for Captain Orion. None of this, I wouldn't have had money, you know? <laughs> but, you know, what I cherish the most about this series is not the material gains of it, but really the experience behind it. Because you'll know. You'll know what I'm talking about. There were some experiences that we had uh, as a community that were so special. Um, some of you may remember this, probably around 100 to 200 of you. I don't even know if you still watch the channel anymore. But there were some really special people who, when part three of the series was premiering, YouTube messed up and it didn't premiere for another two hours. Two hours, not three. Yeah. There was a really special group of people who stuck around during the entire thing and we interacted and, and we bonded. You know, I've kind of made friends from that experience. Aww. And and so much different stuff has happened. There have been so many different things and even just every bit of fan art alone. This piece right here is one of my favorites. So I love it. It's it's so cute. But I love every single piece of fan art that people send in. It, it really genuinely means so much to me that a character from my childhood has got a new light uh, thanks to... Well, you guys, in a sense, Aww. it's really genuinely such a nice thing to know, and I'm really thankful about it. Um, I've been able to work with so many great brands and stuff. Obviously, this video is sponsored by Manscaped, but we'd have uh, we've had uh, many others, and it's it's great because as a as a kid my age, having business experience goes a long way. It's really cool, and and alongside that, well, there's a lot of life life lessons that have been learned from this series. Obviously, my channel's been not as great uh, in terms of uh, numbers and stuff, but it kind of it, it sets a precedent for having to, to stick with something and work with it and make it the best it can be, you know. Um, 
and I genuinely, my life would be completely different without the support that you guys have given me, without this series, without any of it. And of course, you know, listen, none of this would be possible at all without the creation of the iceberg. The original iceberg that started it all, Guff the Doge, Guff the Dog, his entire thing online. Um, that guy really set me for life. Not for life, he set me for a year. He really, like, he, he really just, like, by making this iceberg, which probably didn't even seem like the biggest sin to him, it really just kind of changed the course of how I live, in a sense, which is incredible. It's, it's really a labor of love between the community, because without everyone watching, I would not have been able to do anything, you know? And, uh, obviously, you'll always see YouTubers thanking their fans, Oh, I love every single one of you, you're all the best, but, you know, I genuinely have to be thankful, because without any of that, I don't even know what I'd be doing right now. What else can I really say? I've got a lot of stuff coming out, you know? Um, I I'm definitely slower with my videos, I've got, uh, you know, a, a, a couple more priorities in my life now. Um, but, you know, I'm still working on YouTube, I got some great videos coming out soon that are near completion. But I had to get this one out on the anniversary, because the March, March 20th, will forever be a special day, you know? Because, it's the day that this all started. And, even when I released it, it was already doing way better than you think it would. Like, for my channel, the, the video did good. Which was very, it was great. And then now, you know over like 1.3 million views later on just the full series video <sighs> that's crazy so i don't know this is super sappy i'm showing the fan out up on screen because it's awesome and i love it you know i'm talking about it it's great um this is a long-winded ending but i feel like it's kind of a proper thing to send off this series um Watch three hours, I can watch a little more that's true exactly yeah Especially you went with, through with this sweet freaking face look at him so, I think that kind of wraps it up. Um, I think I've said everything I need to say, and... And a little more. And a little more, that's right. Because this video, this, this outro doesn't have to be like seven minutes long. But, also, it does, oh because the, I have a lot to say. Because really, like, this is a lot, you know? Um, it's a little sad, honestly, to send off this series, in a sense, because it's been so much. Like, part two of the Community Iceberg was basically my entire summer. I was working every day, every night, made the video. Uh, you guys loved it and 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 you know in a sense without that video this video wouldn't be a thing because it's a Compilation of the two full series videos, which then is the last entries video with the original it doesn't matter um, But you know, it's really it's 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 a special thing to, to send off and Well at the very least I hope that you enjoyed the ride everyone watching because I sure did and I sure will, I will continue to. Thing is, is that this really isn't the end. Not even close to it. Because I've got so many more projects coming out, and I think they'll kind of capture the same magic that the original series did. And I hope to see you all there. You know? Um, because I feel very much, uh, you know, if you don't want to watch my videos, you don't watch my videos, that's alright. But it feels like a special thing when you do. And it, it feels like an event, in a sense. Every premiere, people watching, it's typing fun. in the chat live. It is, it's very I'm always fun. there. She is always there. That's true. So you guys can talk to me. That's true. Yeah. You can talk to raymundo 2112s cool girlfriend. But yeah, I think that's about it. Um, thanks to everyone. And I will, uh, I'll see you all in the next one.